countrymen, friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I have no idea why they've decided the powers that be to put me on as the host of League Night. Oh, my God, they're really struggling here. But we're going to cover all the important diplomacy games that are league-based, including today's VDL action. I'm joined, as ever, by our two great co-analysts, David Hood and Adam Silverman. Hey, we did it. Kevin's here, too, but we don't really talk about Kevin too much. Welcome, All right, let's get, let's get to it. Now there ain't nothing to it. Go ahead and bring a lot on. Ain't no giant, I ain't gon' fire on. Catch a fade, you I'm wrong, I'm gone. Y'all can catch the wave that I am on. I am icon, y'all are wide wrong. Think that I'm a reconciled boy. So ain't nothing to it though. This is all me, ain't got much to do with who you know. Keep it a true to form to the L's into a milli though. But they already knew that those for to your opinions know that he is so this is all me, ain't got much to do with who you know. Yeah, keeping it true to form, but they already knew that y'all oh, yeah. go. I'ma show you who I am. All right, so the first thing you're gonna notice is I'm on here and I was not on mute already. The show is a major success and is doing better than any time in history. If you're looking for Brian Brable, his hair, he couldn't be here today. So, all right. Joined by Adam and David and Kevin to talk about League Night. Fellas, I know we're talking about the games, but aren't you excited to be working with me? Isn't this going to be very, you know, productive? Aren't you going to learn a lot? We seem to have lowered our standards, but we're all going to, we're all in this together. We're going to do it. I am looking forward to an experience tonight. That's what I'm looking forward to. All right. I'm here, so, I'm here to make sure nothing breaks. <laughs> I'm just going to say, I have control over nothing. Kevin is just going to put things on the screen and we're going to comment. I have no idea what's going to happen, except I did prepare something. I was told to prepare a monologue and a topic. So I'm going to give this is the setup for the monologue. Okay. I'm a big podcast listener. I don't know if you guys like podcasts, but I've, I've drifted to, to them over the years. And I, if you haven't been listening, to Wondery's podcast called Spellcaster about Sam Bankman Freed, you're missing out because it's really, really good. And episode two talks about Sam Bankman Freed's love and skill in the game of diplomacy. Oh my. I am going to play literally one minute from the podcast. It's fair use, YouTube, fair use, because we're here commenting on it. Here it is. I want you to listen to what. The podcast says about Sam Bankman fried and his gameplay of diplomacy. Their favorite game of all was a 1950s era strategy board game called Diplomacy. It's a game of global conquest, kind of like Risk, but there are no dice and basically no elements of chance. To get ahead, you have to negotiate with the other players. One of the big problems with that game Diplomacy that I found is like it can definitely be a, a destroyer of friend groups. Because it's one of the ones where people do aggressively betray each other. Diplomacy games at Epsilon Theta could go on for days. Players form secret alliances off-site and then return to the basement table to make their move. Sam's thing was to draw another player into his plan. He very quickly get into a discussion about some of the complex thoughts he had about the structuring of the game um, and how he's now starting to see this interesting strategy, like it would require him to get someone else to work with him. Sam would go into intense, almost endless detail. He'd blind them with his logic and reasoning. And then once he had them on his side, he'd find the right moment to turn on them. He really, he did have a lot of glee when somebody discovered that he had tripped them. Okay, there we go. See, you too, if you play diplomacy, can make billions and be charged uh, with felonies. Uh, but I'm wondering, the gameplay described, Sam Bankman fried who does it most resemble in today's diplomacy modern outlook? Who are we talking about, David? You mean other than Ed Sullivan? <laughs> 
which was no, the no, are you kidding me? No, no, it's actually not. It's actually not Ed Sullivan's play style. Uh, somebody who is gleeful when you find out that they've tr that they've uh, th that you've been tricked by them. Uh, it actually doesn't doesn't describe very many a top players of today's world. It describes top players of 20 years ago. It does not describe top players of today's diplomacy hobby. <clears throat> Interestingly, in the next episode of Deadline, I'm getting ready to release, I talk about a thread on Reddit where they, where they get into that issue about diplomacy is the game that kills friendships and how people that say that are usually people that have not played or have not played much or have not played in a very long time because the truth of diplomacy, as we all know on this, all four of us know, is that it's based on building friendships and relationships and partnerships. It is not based on fundamentally based on destroying them. Adam, clearly they're talking about you. <laughs> you, 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 and you and I have played together. You know I'm a softy. <laughs> Oh, uh, wow. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, I totally agree with David. It's actually not a personality type we see at the highest levels of diplomacy very much these days, which isn't to say that that type of game can't work. Um, but we we tend to not see it, actually. We tend to see people who are trying to build relationships based on trust. And when the stab happens, the stab happens and it's explained and it's not a ha ha ha, I got you. It's more of a like, this is what I needed to do to maximize my position. I hope you understand. Let's keep trying to work together if we can kind of thing. So I can stab you again two turns later. Now that's yeah. really Adam Silverman right there. Hey, 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 ho, ho. Look, look, if you want to be successful at diplomacy in the long term, this is not the way to play. At the front house, okay, maybe. But this idea, which has been built through many episodes of this uh, podcast, is that this game can explain why we have, uh, you yeah, know, but, but like, crisis. What I'm, what I'm, what I'm not <laughs> understanding is why have we not had crypto bros show up at the tournaments and bankroll us and pay for our space and our pro I mean, this is a missed opportunity. It's a, yeah, it's it really a missed is. opportunity. But speaking of the many opportunities you have to play diplomacy with people who don't play like this, because you won't be successful either in crypto or in the game of diplomacy. Let's talk about what's coming up. In the world of diplomacy, we've got, I know in July, mid-July, we have Regatta, the Denver tournament. Um, and then we have, I think, two or three tournaments, two in uh, August and one in September. David or Adam, do either of you want to talk about what's coming up in tournament-wise? Well, I, I, you know, Regatta is a storied tournament. Uh, it has a wonderful history in the diplomacy hobby. It hosted a World DipCon a number of years ago um, and took a break for quite a few years. It's probably been 10 plus years since the last regatta tournament. And we're so happy that the Denver club led by Manus Hand and Eber Condrell and, and other uh, great players there are, are doing a tournament there. It's going to be a huge amount of fun. I, I'm just so thrilled that they're doing this again. Um, so, you know, players who are in the Midwest or, or anywhere that are looking to, to play, it's, it, I'm sure it's going to be a really fun time. Yeah, and that I'm same going, weekend. I'm sorry. That same weekend, if you're in your European player watching this, is the French National DipCon. That's actual same weekend, and then in early August, you've also got a pair of tournaments. You've got the Boston Massacre, obviously in Boston. Then you've got Gen Con in Indianapolis. Later in September, the very end of September, you got Weasel Moot in Chicago. And I think, and I don't know if we're getting ready to talk about this, but if you want to play virtual games like we're going to watch tonight. There's also the Summer Classic coming up, which I think is in late July this year. We played uh, using the Backstabber program, just like the people on today's games will have used. I have also heard that there's a small tournament somewhere in the far, in the, in the, in, in, uh, I don't know. It's a small one. It's not that important, right, Ed? It's in Bangkok, I think. It's in Bangkok, the World Diplomacy Championships, WDC. Uh, but if you can't afford Bangkok, if you're not as rich as you and David, uh, you can go to the Boston Massacre in early August by Alex Maslow's group, too. So there's opportunities to play all throughout the summer. And in terms of leagues or extended play, Kevin, what do we got? Uh, next uh, next league night, we'll have the next VDL uh, July 8th, which is uh, the weekend uh, after Independence Day weekend here in the States. Uh, Nexus uh, leagues are ongoing. We're going to see a little bit uh, of Nexus League uh, press league play uh, later tonight uh, on the show. We'll have uh, someone from uh, Nexus join us too, which is great. So 
Uh, looking forward to that. And um, I think uh, uh, the French League. The French League uh, has monthly games. They have still been going. And the German League, who we covered uh, in uh, May on League Night, uh, they are still uh, trying to form a regular schedule. Uh, but Robert Chupa, for any uh, folks here, comment in the chat um, and comment in the, uh, the YouTube uh, comments, and we will get in touch with you. For anyone trying to play both virtual and in-person league play, one uh, shout out is uh, the Windy City Weasels had our regular Red Wednesday uh, this past Wednesday. So uh, leagues are still going strong. We love it. We should also mention that next Saturday is the next game day for the Tour of Britain, which is another English language league like the VDL we're watching tonight. Tour of Britain goes eight rounds during the year, ending in November. Gary Sterling, I think is one of our players we're going to watch today, actually runs the Tour of Britain. That's another thing that runs on the VWDC Discord server. So you can you can find that link probably below in the show notes or in the uh, on the DBN website. They call it English, David, but if you listen to McAllis, I'm not sure it's English. Uh, in any event, uh, as Kevin cues the standings, uh, Adam, come on. Arthur Conan Doyle said English uh, Americans and the Brits are two people separated by a common language. Um, if, to paraphrase a soccer quote, uh, soccer is a game with 22 people uh, that kick around a ball in which Germany always wins. Isn't the VDL a game of seven players with infinite possibilities that Nicola Taille always seems to top the standings? Uh, you know, here we go again, a uh, third year in a row where Nicola Taille is having a fantastic VDL, uh, only with three boards, three tops. Uh, it's a perfect record. He's pitching a perfect uh, game in diplomacy, which is very difficult to do unless you're named Tanya Gill. Uh, all right. And so, I mean, this is a pretty, I mean, this is a solid group of players, folks. What do you think? I absolutely agree with that. And, and those who think that VDL is too North American centric, I mean, it's true that we got a, not a lot of North American players that play, but a lot of the people that really succeed are not. You know, Nicola from France, you've got uh, Michalis, obviously, uh, always does well in VDL as well when he plays, and he's, he's from the UK. And, and Peter right there at number eight from, from Australia. So we've got – and Wes, of course, lives in Europe now and plays from Europe. So we've got lots of uh, diversity in terms of geography on this on this list, and that's fun too. It's a good slate of players. It's, uh, you know, I mean, you, you, you look down – you look at this list of top ten, and these are all players that, you know, you're, you're a little nervous if you get called next to them on a board. So uh, I'm sure we're going to see some of them today and uh, excited to see if they can keep up the streak. So the yeah. name I kind of want to point out to – I'm sorry, Kevin. I was just going to say it's easy to be top of the standings when you roll a 17 uh, on uh, like Nick Law did last uh, time. So anyone who missed that broadcast, uh, go check that one out because he just pulls a masterpiece out once a season. So diplomacy is sort of a game like poker, right? You can just sit at a table and, you know, you can have someone who's, you know, inexperienced or you can play with a champion. And the name I sort of want to point out is Cody Green. Cody Green's in the top 10, and he hasn't topped a board. But he's only been eliminated one time. And continuing to play, even for new players, you may not top. But if you just show up, work hard, find someone, don't get eliminated, you too can be on the first page of the standings. And eventually you will get the experience to get where you need to go. So VDL really is a league for everybody. It's very democratic, actually. Uh, Hard to believe, given that Zach or is the dictator of the uh, North American Diplomacy Federation. But nevertheless, it's time, Kevin, to get to the games. My God, just uh, just one one thing to add to that, which is that every person on this board in one of their games came out of nowhere, topped their board, and suddenly was a top player of this game. None of these folks were born expert diplomats. You know, they they were newbies. They were new at the game at one point. They showed up at a VDL game or at a face-to-face -face game. They kicked the butt of their board, and everybody said, oh, I better watch out for Nikola. I better watch out for Ben or Jackson or Johnny, you know? And there's a next generation, and Cody may be one of them, and many of them may not even be on this list, and we're going to be starting to see those names coming up. Yeah, I was going to say, I've been in diplomacy now for many decades. The only one of these players that I really knew much about before the pandemic was Peter McNamara. Yeah. And the rest of these players are people who have either picked up the game recently or have really sort of joined the wider hobby recently. And it's great to see those names at the top of the list. 
you'll be excited to see tonight. There is a player on this top 10 who you will see in all three rounds. And you will see some rematches from the game that I watched on Wednesday here in Chicago. So there may be some uh, bad blood uh, rolling over from uh, midweek to uh, weekend. Uh, we'll see tonight. Well, all three rounds may be 24 hours in a row. So we'll figure out who the Cal Ripken of VDL July is. We'll see. All right. Have fun, guys. See you in a bit. See you, All Kevin. right. All right, game number one, Verve or Vervet, who knows? I don't actually care. Uh, all right, as we go through the player list here, uh, we've got Aslan Sarwar from Pakistan, uh, Gary Sterley from England, Isaac Ukes, I guess, uh, from Germany, are playing uh, from Great Britain from Germany, Yelti as Italy, Cody Green as Russia, and Bradley Grace uh, currently uh, leading the Olympus Nexus, I'm uh, sorry, the Olympus main event season one finals. As Turkey. Fellas, what do you know about any of these players? I don't it's, know as much about the Austrian players I'd like. But <laughs> that's Brandon it, Fogel. It should be point, it should be pointed out that this is the game that starts at 3 a.m. Eastern time. That's why we've got so many players from other uh time zones here. But what a great fun group. We've seen a lot of uh, Yelty Kuiper recently playing uh you know playing in the in the VDL. And of course we've already mentioned Cody who is uh, uh, really exuberantly joining these games w one after another, and you can't help but get better the more you play. I'm really looking at the EF relationship here because uh, Gary's a nice guy and so is Aslan, so we'll see how it goes. All right, Adam. Uh, actually, David, I'm going to give you the spring since you're right below me, and that way it'll uh, make it easier for me to remember. Spring 1901, what do you see, David? Sure. Well, you see very, very standard openings from England and Germany. The opening from France is the one where you run away from your enemies. It's kind of the opposite of the way I play France a lot of the time. But it's a, actually a, have, has become a fairly popular opening with somebody that wants to just keep a little bit of a lower profile. Um, you've got the Italian going into Trieste without the follow-up. So that usually, although not always, means that there's some kind of arrangement with the Austrians. We will find out. And in the Russia-Turkish relationship, you've got what has, I think had become a fairly standard move where you bounce in the Black Sea and you don't move your army smarter to Khan like we used to in the older days. I think the question about the French opening is this sets up the French to put both armies in Iberia and keep the fleet in Mao or move it up to the channel or move it down to Western Med, um, which could be a very anti-English opening, uh, depending on what we see them do in the fall. This could be, this is an opening you sometimes see when you've got a Western triple where you put the French fleet into the Western Med. Germany takes Belgium and Holland because they need the extra oomph if they're going to be in a Western triple. So in, you, in England, with the army that it can convoy through, uh, you know, through Edinburgh either way, can decide what they want to do there. So this can be a Western triple opening, but we'll see. Yep. Uh, I'm curious. The, thing, the move here would be the convoy from Edinburgh to Norway, as we see, uh, Adam, but that move to Edinburgh is unusual for England now. It seemed to be that that was the standard 10 years ago. Or you don't see, you actually don't see it a lot. Um, you know, it does offer this flexibility where you can make moves like uh, what England is doing like right now and convoy up to Norway through the Norwegian Sea and use North Sea to take Belgium. But generally what you would see is wanting to put the army on Bel in Belgium and, and the fleet in Norway. Um, this looks fairly um, Western Tripoli based on these moves here. You see the bounce in, de in Sweden you see the fleet going to the south coast of Spain. I think uh, it's interesting that they made the choice to do that rather than the more aggressive move of going to the Western Med and taking the two uh, Iberian centers with um, with the armies. But uh, definitely we very Western Tripoli here and a risk for England leaving the North Sea open in this position, right? The most Western Tripoli thing that they could do or the more aggressive move would be for England to forego the second build and actually convoy over the North Sea to Norway while moving Norwegian Sea to back. That would it's a lot more uh that's a lot stronger and also gives a lot more momentum to the team. Um in the east, you see Italy making the really strong play against the uh Austrians with help of Turkey, cutting Serbia's support and getting support for their own convoy into Greece. Um, this is really just devastating to uh Mr. or Mrs. Unknown in Austria. Uh <laughs> They, they, they are certainly going to have a lot of trouble recovering from this. David, we, you know, in the early years of the pandemic, right, there was a lot of AI cooperation. And then Karthik uh, started 
you know, everyone on DVN was like, oh, you know, what's wrong with Turkey? And, and Karthik sort of said, here, I can show you what to do if you're Italy. And, and now we're seeing it. Uh, what do you think of this move? This is also McCarlis is probably happy in the background, loving the ITs. Uh, I think this move is fine myself. I have I have always thought AI was a strong, power, uh, powerful thing to do. But uh, for Italy, if you can get the jump and keep Italy, I'm sorry, Turkey and Russia fighting each other, this is a great start for Italy. The question I have is when does the meta of Italy having a free walk into Trieste in spring 1901 that has come up over the past – I don't know, a couple of years that we've seen, when is that going to end? When are we going to stop seeing bounces in Galicia and start seeing Austrians cover Trieste from Vienna in 1901? Is that meta going to change in the next few months because of stuff like this? Possibly. You know, and I'll notice it co coupled with the Turkish move to Armenia and black, right? So there's a defined IT here. The build becomes very important, fellas, uh, for Turkey on this IT relationship. So I guess it'll, uh, we'll have to see. It's what an R, it's a, oh, it's a fleet con. Okay. Yeah, you, you build a fleet first. I mean, it's not the most alliance move, but building that second fleet, I think, you know, if the agreement is you build one more fleet and that's it, um, might as well do it now because it's harder to do later. I, I disagree. I think if you build a fleet here, you are saying this is not an IT. Because if you've already got the Black Sea, there's not really anything to do with that fleet. And so it's, it's just a defensive move for an alliance against your alliance partner. So I think this, again, who knows? But I, I, if I were Italy, I'd say, hmm, I might need to try to talk to the Russians here and come up with some kind of wintergreen arrangement. You know, given the aggressiveness of Turkey's open, I opening, I tend to agree. What I'm also fascinated by is the two fleet build for France. That is always an incredibly aggressive, but again, I think it fits into the Western triple um, situation that we're seeing where, where those fleets are going to drop directly into Lyon and Western Med. I was, yeah. I was gonna say, if this is a Western triple, it ain't a good one. You don't you you don't put the English fleet in belt. None of that really makes a lot of sense for a Western Triple. You've lost tempo, and you've got an English fleet now. And where what it? Yes, it goes back to the North Sea, but wonderful. You know you're not you've, you've gone backwards and forwards, which doesn't really do you a lot of good here. But we'll see. We'll see what happens because Italy may be upset about uh, what Turkey did, or he may not be. But he's got a French problem that's more immediate than what Bradley did on a bill. So well, that's, a, that's another that's another thought, though, right, is that, you know, if the Fre if the Western triple was completely apparent to everyone, maybe Italy saying, OK, we need another we need three fleets because France is going to have three fleets in the south right away. Also, I mean, that's maybe maybe at least puts pulls the sting away a little bit of seeing that. Perhaps. All right, Kevin, roll it. Uh Oh, there we go. David, no Western triple. Well, and the, and the way, and if you're Italy, a way to deal with all those fleets is to make sure you talk to them about going north, and they have, and good for good for uh, Gary. Maybe, you know, um, Germany didn't didn't join in. You know, they're going east. They they still think they're in a Western triple. <laughs> so, I, if you're France and you're just pulling the pulling the trigger against England by yourself, I mean, that can be okay, and if you get the jump on them or something. And that might work here, but England's got that extra army on the on the on the island, so it's not going to be a real easy slog. Let's look at the east for just a minute. You still you have the the Italians now taking Serbia. I mean, this is a really fast moving deal, and that's fine. It looks like maybe there's still an IT cracking going on, but now you've got the fleet con to Bulgaria. Blah, you know that's not really a unit that can be anything but defensive. And now sometimes defensive is important. But, you know, we'll, we'll see. The, the, obviously, the French move is the most interesting move here as opposed to going through with the triple. In, in complete fairness to the IT, though, having a fleet on the south coast of Bulgaria is a lot more of a stable position with the, uh, than having army Romania, army Bulgaria, and then having to be worried about what's happening with Serbia, what's happening with Greece. Um, so, you know, there may be something to that. All right. Adam in the fall, why don't you take us to it? They sure. Not look like a faint by France. Uh, not at all. We see the France go right into the Irish Sea, convoy into Wales, which was unstoppable, move back up to the Mao. Um, and we see Germany moving to Behal into Belgium. So Germany is now uh, participating in, in a little bit of this. So Germany actually is, a, is the real winner here, building two this year. Um, 
while still kind of pressing against Russia, bouncing in Warsaw and such things. Um, elsewhere on the board, the East is kind of interesting. Italy makes an interesting choice rather than covering Trieste. They just make a non-supported attack on Vienna. Is that is that what's happening there? That is what's happening, which don't make no sense. Yeah, no. that's a very odd choice here rather than just covering Trieste or just using Serbia to support Tyroli to Trieste. So um, the, the net effect of that is Italy is, is, a, is in a break-even situation, but Austria will build, actually. Um, meanwhile, Turkey makes a futile attack on Sev, and that, that's about it. England takes it takes St. Petersburg, so they won't disband. Uh, but the French aggression is, is pretty strong here. Yeah, the fact well, that Holland went really to Belgium. To build, because they took uh, Tunis, right? So they still get, they still get one. That's they true. Do, they do. Yeah, and it's going to have to be an army in Venice at this point. Well, it probably should have been anyway. Mm -hmm. In the IT, in this particular situation, I don't think you, I don't think you want to turn on France yet. You want them to get even further embroiled in their English war. But I thought the most interesting move there was Holland to Belgium with Germany sort of piling on. We'll see if now we're getting ready to see Picardy and Burgundy, for example. Mm -hmm. That would be one way to pivot if you're the Germans. Ooh, ooh, the builds are interesting. You don't build a fleet here as Germany, if you're all in on the, uh, oh, well, I guess, I guess you do build the fleet here if you're attacking England. I'm sorry. Yeah. So I guess that, that does, that is pretty telling. Sorry. That probably um, answers the question about whether yeah, we're yeah. going to see Picardy and Burgundy. Yep. And, and why not? Right? Now we have the army build in Khan, uh, which, you know, obviously shows continued cooperation here. Okay. Spring. There we go, Kevin. Oh my, David. Well, uh, the um, IT may not exactly be what's happening here, unless they're killing that fleet on purpose. But I don't see why that would be the situation. You know, it looks to me like the maybe this is some kind of feint, but I, 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 I sort of doubt it. The Turks do take Sevastopol, even though the loser Romania, uh, and the Austrians are taking taking service. So there's a lot going on as you're is often true in the Balkans where you're, you're used, you're, you're next to so many centers, you're going to have a lot of dipsy doodle, but is that it thing, an actual conflict or is it something else? I think it's probably an actual conflict. Let's look, let's look at the West. The Germans did, you know, just sort of did stay in, in their area and did not move into France, which makes sense. The uh, English sort of guessed that maybe the French are going to do Liverpool and instead they lose London here. Uh, and don't defend it. So that's an interesting choice to make. Uh, in the in the north, in Scandinavia, you have the English having to come back, and you got the Germans getting in a position to take centers either, I guess they're going to take them from Russia, most likely is what we're talking about here. Maybe go after St. Pete, but also might be going after or some Russian centers. This is a nice job by Germany right here. The move up to Livonia is really an excellent choice. Um, they're in Livonia and Prussia. They have really a lot of options here, and they really have a Russia who might be a lot more mad at Turkey than they are at them. So they they might take one or two off of uh, <clears throat> off of the off of the um, uh, the, the Russians right here. Um, I think what really strikes me as interesting about the Italian uh, moves is not only do they make this move against the Turks there, but they also make a supported attack on Trieste, which suggests that this is more of a go it alone that I'm switching sides kind of thing. Um, it suggests a lot of chaos in the East, which means uh, really good news for Gary in the West, because the French really is going to have to be thinking about what happens next for the FG. Um, and if the East is still a mess and uh, France is in a position to swing around quickly, that could be very interesting. Just think if France had decided instead to take London with the fleet, they would then be able to, to guarantee Liverpool and take both of them. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that have been an amazing guess to make? Wow. wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. Wow. Oh, oh uh, Bradley got to talk to somebody, Adam, and uh, things have changed. Well, it's kind of interesting in the West, right? I mean, Germany decides to self-balance in Holland, right, as as their uh, play here, and England walks right into Denmark, right? So, um, so England takes Denmark. Germany takes um, takes Norway. Fails to take any Russian centers, which is kind of interesting. 
and actually surprising in this situation that they wouldn't uh, at least take one of the sure ones because Russia really isn't doing anything very helpful. And ultimately, if you don't take them now, then you're going to be fighting Turkey for them later on. But I think more meaningful is the fact that um, whatever just happened in the Turkey-Italian situation seems to have indeed been a feint as Italy turns right back around, retakes Serbia, takes Trieste, maybe putting Italy in a full, safe, uh, full sense of, uh, putting Austria in a full sense of security so they wouldn't support Trieste right there so they can take it. But uh, Turkey is back. They retake Romania. They're going to be rebuilding that fleet and rebuilding another unit uh, as a result of getting sad. Yeah, Vienna, Vienna moving to Budapest instead of supporting Trieste is another one of those choices like you wonder. You mean you were more, more worried about the Russians taking Budapest than you were the Italians trying to eat all of your centers? Uh, eh. Doesn't uh, make an unfortunate guess that Doug may have made there. I, I really would have liked Germany to have taken one of the Russian centers right here. I, I You know, I, I feel like it was there for the taking. Russia really isn't doing a whole lot for you in this position. They're slowing, they're slowing down the IT. Well, down the yeah, I was going to ask about that. And then just, you know, Gary getting into the North Sea, um, you know, I think, and Germany losing Denmark, this was this was a, a great German position that seemed a little bit, uh, you know, squandered. I, I think you're I think you're better off with those units being yours holding back the IT than it being the uh, the Russians at this point. Though. I think there's a lot to be said for that. You know how your units are going to order. You don't know how the Russian units are going to order. <laughs> right. I've always said, I've, yes, yes, it can be a mistake to, to eliminate people, but at least you're getting rid of units that you don't order. And, or, <laughs> and, 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 making, and making units you do order. Okay. Oof. All right, look at the builds. Guys, what do you think? You know, I thought the Turkish thing that was ended up being Oof. a feint where the fleet got killed, I thought that was to kill the fleet, and now he's rebuilt it. So, I mean, I, again, in an IT, I think Turkey is allowed to have a second fleet, and they're allowed to keep a fleet in, you know, Bulgaria or Aegean or something like that. But it is odd to see that rebuilt right here. That is really strange. Um, I, you know, I think the, the Italian choice to build that fleet in Rome is a strange one, honestly. I don't know why you build in Rome there. I think, you know, you're not needing to move up to Tuscany. If you're going after the French, you're going to move it out to Tyrrhenian Sea anyway. So why not so give yourself the flexibility or at least the plausible deniability by putting it in Naples? Maybe, maybe he is going to go to Tuscany and send the other fleet to Tyranian and then be able to go Leon Western Med. Maybe that's the theory. But, but why not do Tunis, Tyranian Sea? It, no, you know. You're right. That, you're right. This is, I'm, I'm, I'm searching for a reason for what Yelty did, but I can't. You're right that I'm, I'm failing to come up with a good one. I understand the concept of having a second Turkish fleet in. I just don't think I would like it here. You know, no. it, uh, you, you, you could put another army that you can convoy through. Why or or, or, or even hold the, or even wave the second build and see, make sure that Italy's on side and you can always rebuild it next year if you're really nervous. But yeah, I well, agree. With there's also a paucity of dots left for the IT, right? And so there's an issue now about, you know, setting yourself up for what's next. Um, it's probably not imprudent, but you're going to have alliance management issues because one would think Italy would want to jump on France right now, given how committed they are. Um, away, but we'll see. All right, and we shall. Wow. Uh, Aslan has decided that he, and this ha happens sometimes with England, you decide you just want to be a government in exile in Scandinavia and try to live there and not try to defend your island now that he doesn't have an army to help defend him. So he's just giving up completely. Obviously, great news for Gary Sterley. And the Italians are coming, though. The Italians are doing exactly what Adam just said and going to, to, to Tyranian and and um, and tuna, so they are coming, and the IT is already making progress with, frankly, Russian and German help in Moscow. So you, we talked earlier about uh, about Bradley Grace uh, and some of his abilities, and my gosh, he's got everybody trying to help him into Moscow. I, I you yeah, know, I who doesn't I, want him in Moscow is the question. Maybe I, I can I can understand that you know he talked the Russian into like. You know this, and and that that's something that makes sense. But you have a very viable German position here. Why is Germany ordering Livonia supporting that to Moscow? There is no world where that is this a sensible thing to do. Um, well, you know, it, diplomatically or, or otherwise. 
maybe there's a promise you put me in Moscow and I'll stab my Italian ally or something like that. He does. He does go Smyrna to the Aegean, which is why if I'm the Italians, I'm like, man, what are you doing? What are you being in? The, what are you doing in the Aegean? That's next to the, uh, that's next to the Onion. That's, that's my North Sea, man. You can't. Be I, next think it's a tr I think it's a trade for St. Petersburg. I, I think there's just so many choices here that were made by Germany and France too, for that matter. Why is Gascony? Why are Gascony and Belgium bouncing in Burgundy? Do you guys really need to do that right now? You know, Belgium should be going to Rohr and Munich should be going to Kiel, so they can kick out the Denmark and he can still cover Munich in the fall. This is just not really good momentum play. Gascony should probably be going to Marseille to protect against the Italians going to Piedmont if they do what it looks like they're going to do. So I really think, you know, you really have to think about these things and, you know, pick somebody to trust them and trust them. Ah, uh, ye, ye have too much faith, Adam Silverman. All right. Well, Michaela said that uh, there was a strong stab from Turkey to Italy. And uh, I, I don't think this is a stab, though. I think this is agreed upon. Yeah, Italy's getting both the Austrian dots. Yeah. But you were right about Moscow supporting the Germans into St. Pete. That's what that was, Ed. You were right about that. You know, the French are coming back down. They have to with the Italian fleet moves being what they were. What do you guys think about the support to Western Med as opposed to, you know, taking the guarantee to Lyon? I move to Lyon because then Marseille – you know, has to be defended now uh, with the strength of two. It seems to me that that should have been the move. You, you, have, you absolutely go to Gulf of Lyon here. And again, Munich and Gascony are, are bouncing in Burgundy. This is just not, I mean, I guess you don't go to Marseille here because you're going to build there. But I mean, it's just such wasted play. Why not order Munich to Tyrolia or something if you're worried about Tyrolia going to Munich? But you know it's not going to Munich. You know it's going to Piedmont here. I should, you know, I mean, we're making some some quibbles here with the play, but obviously there's been a very successful FG relationship here, and they've even got England supporting the Germans to Kiel, uh, I guess, to keep the get them no, out. No, that's to protect right. the self. That's against the self bounce, though. Yeah, that's against the self bounce. But my point is that the German position is not terrible. I know that they've lost uh, Norway, but uh, you know, they're they're not terrible either. That this this is a little bit of an IT versus FG race. And I'm not sure that the IT is going to win the race. I mean, we'll see. I, I, I think know. France Warsaw is gone. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, I think France can lock down the Med. I don't think that that's going to be an issue because they're getting two builds right here. And they no longer those, – those units in the north are probably not really needed at this point. Maybe, maybe one of those fleets, but probably not both of them. So – Assuming they can lock the Med down, then you have the issue of can Germany be locked down? And I think the answer is probably no, because Germany's not building here and Germany doesn't have the armies in the middle to do it. Really, what should no, have wait, happened? Germany, wait a minute. Germany is building, aren't they? they no, they're not building. You're no. right. They're, they're oh. even. Yeah. Uh, no, they're, no, plus, they're, they're okay. plus one. Okay. Oh, because of uh, Warsaw, I think it's one of the things. Yeah. Yeah. So we say goodbye to uh, the unknown player. What we know of the unknown player is uh, he didn't make it very long. The, the, somebody in the chat said it was Doug Malott, which I think is I think I remembered seeing he was going to play. So maybe that's who that was. Okay, so uh, who do you like, guys? End of 1904. Let's see the builds first and then say who do we like. Wave, Turkey. Turkey waves one. Yeah. I can see that here. I, I, I think you got to say Gary's Gary Sterling in France has got the strongest position, just in the sense that if you're going to lock things up, the French always have a better chance than than some of the other players of coming out on top in that situation. You're a little bit less uh, under threat. Well, I think the other point is that if the other side of the board – is pushing up against Germany, France can probably decide, hey, I'm going to pick off some of those dots because they're not going to need to use all of their units to lock down the Med. So there may even be opportunities for France to grow in this position and take some more centers off of, out of the north. Um, so I, I agree in general that, that France is in the best position. I think the one wild card is, do Italy and Turkey stick together long enough for that to even matter or do they break? Uh, in which case, France could actually really have a 
even better game, though, though Turkey could also get very large in that situation. That, that to me is the critical question. I don't know if you, uh, if you're Turkey, you feel like you need to stab now. You can get, I, I don't think you do actually. I, I don't see any reason why you stab now. You push Italy up against the line, and then if the opportunity presents it to really get huge, you do that. And maybe you don't even need to, though. I'm, I'm with you all the way. All right, let's go to the spring. You know, strategically, in this situation, you, France and Italy really want to make a deal so that each of them go away from each other. Now, maybe that's why you see Gary with these holds. Maybe he's got he's doing some sort of diplomatic play to try to convince the Italians that actually we ought to stab our respective allies and leave each other alone. And often that can be a good choice for the Franco-Italian uh, relationship. I think from Gary's perspective, he's absolutely right. Gary has no need to lock up the med right here. If he can go play in the north, he's got plenty of centers up there to gain. It's much more lucrative than spending six units to block down the med. I mean, we all know that that med fight can be just a lockdown and then you don't go anywhere. But, you know, you may not be any way to diplomatically do this. Italy may think it's too dangerous for him to try to go do that and leave the French alone. So that might be the, the problem. I'll, I'll also comment, though, that may be a, may have been an argument why in Marseille the build should have been an army instead of a fleet. That fleet just kind of sits there and doesn't really have a whole lot to do um, in, in this kind of defense. Maybe, although it might have been hard to justify to Germany that you're building two armies. And you see the German units actually are sort of going west here. They're not certainly not going south. No. And I it's I never knew, but Ruhr to Belgium does not make sense to me. It, it's kind of shocking not to see something move into Silesia or Prussia here. That's really this, surprising. This, this, is, this is Isaac listening to I or T or IT, I think. Yeah, maybe the goal is that it's now a uh, ITG, which is probably not the right play for Isaac here. Well, or maybe it's getting ready to be a TG. I mean, who knows what the theory is? Yeah. Well, if Germany is on board, the line can break, and Germany looks like they're on board, Adam. Yeah, but why does that entail uh, Turkey taking Warsaw, right, if, if that's the plan? Um, <laughs> I, I don't now know. But seems, like that's, yeah, that doesn't seem that, – I wonder if Bradley should have done that. He should have just gone to Galicia maybe and saved uh, Warsaw well, for later. Well, what's, what is actually happening here is everybody – making aggressive moves against everybody because we see Romania supporting Bulgaria to Serbia. We see a bounce in Greece. It's hard to believe that all of those moves are arranged, isn't it? Well, they've done, they've done a feint before. Yeah. I, th and, I think they're all arranged. I think yeah, Ukraine they're, they're just trying to convince Warsaw Isaac to do what Isaac is doing here, which is why I don't understand Ukraine to Warsaw unless they made a deal. And covering Vienna too. Wow. Yeah, the Burgundy is lost, right? So that's bad news. It might be this ITG with with the idea that uh, Germany, you'll get Norway. I need Warsaw. You know, Italy's going to have the hard time growing from here. Uh, I'll also good. say I think Gary's making good moves here, but why is Norwegian holding rather than going to the North Sea? I think he was trying to do some diplomatic plays with his last moves, but they didn't work. Yeah. Yeah, well, Yorkshire, two units are gone, so that's probably Norwegian and Yorkshire anyway. Okay, winter 1905, we get a couple of builds. I think the uh, Turkish build, another wave, Army and Kiel. Bye-bye, Aslan. You got done dirty. Um, and here we go. I mean, we and are – Boy, was I wrong. Boy, was I wrong about the – Adam and I were both wrong about the French position being – Man, so is this a great would... position for Turkey, though. I was not expecting Isaac to do that. And I'm not saying maybe it'll turn out to be the right move if there's an IT war and he doesn't get outraced. And we bid goodbye to Aslan. Thank you for playing. We hardly knew you. We do. All right. We got a uh, battle of four and then there were four spring. David, tell us what's going to happen. Well, hold on. What, what did France pull? Well, I think he had lost. I think he had lost units by. Um, no, there was, it said minus two, right? Can you go back? Those were the English removals, not the English. Ah, we were Sorry. looking at the wrong thing. Come on, Adam. Come on. It's, it's, it's easy to realize that England is gone, and therefore France is England. But uh, that was That's right. <laughs> All right. So are, are these moves in the East still arranged? I mean, probably, I think. And Isaac is, is still um, 
you know, going west, although he does go, does relocate his armies, which makes sense into Livonia and St. Pete, just to keep the Turks honest if they're still friendly. Hmm. Oh, wait, the Italians, did the Italians actually take Spain? They did. They do because Germany cut Gascony. Yep. Yeah, everything, everything is. And Marseille. And Marseille. And Italians cut Marseille. Hmm. All right. Um, let's go a little quicker, uh, my producer says. So into the fall. Ooh, look at this. Neat moves by Italy. Yes. Wow. Yeah, so is that fr so we got France retaking Spain, but Italy retaking Marseille and also forcing the Mid-Atlantic Ocean uh, because uh, the French chose to support themselves to the North Sea rather than going down supporting Mid-Atlantic Ocean. Quite quite fascinating. A um, lot of more arranged, uh, at least what according to the chat we're seeing, are arranged uh, bounces. Actually, a more so to Galicia was supported this time. So that... And there's a convoy. Know. I'm not convinced this is arranged. This, 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 now, this now looks fairly aggressive. Now you've got a lot... <laughs> Now you got a lot of Turkish armies surrounding Austria. I don't know. Yeah, this this may be arranged, but it's arranged in the mind of the Turks and the Italians <laughs> said, yeah. Uh, now, is, now if this is if this is some sort of TG now, where it's like, okay, we're going to fight our fight our respective people. Turkey's uh, Germany's going to fight France, and uh, Turkey's going to fight Italy. Th this could get ugly. I don't know. Does this game have a time limit, or is this game? Uh, it does. Seven okay, in an untimed game, maybe that's something you want to do. In a, in, a, in, a, in a timed game, rather, in an untimed game, that might be pretty risky for the Germans. I don't know. We're seeing some pretty aggressive and, I think, fun play in this game, honestly. I'm like, and, and will Turkey wave? I believe that they will not wave. That's my guess. Turkey builds Army Khan. Yeah, that's Army probably right. Fleet smear. Okay, that's they're that's, ready to move. That's they're very aggressive. Move. Okay, yeah. that's that's aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, that's Turkey saying, "I want all your dots." All right, spring, David. Okay, Germans are now taking the North Sea. They're continuing on by taking Paris. This is sort of a mop-up operation now between the uh, the Germans d d trying to mop up the West and the Turks trying to mop up the East, and we will see which one of them maybe can get more centers uh, because the, the, the stabs have been made. And now it's just a question of tactics, I think, against the, for, for me on each side. The French, how are they defending? They're, they are def going to the Mid-Atlantic, which makes some sense. They couldn't defend Paris anyway. And how are the Italians defending? They're, they're sort of doing the best they can, which is not much until they get some more units in position. I, I want to just give my hats off to both Bradley and Isaac here. This is one of the ways that you get to big results in diplomacy games is you run your alliance, but at the appropriate time, both sides of the board make the agreement that, hey, this is what we're going to do. We're not going to play this to a two on two. We're both going to stab our allies and see where we go with this. And we have the, you know, we have the wherewithal and the, and the will to give it a shot. And so my hat's off to both of them for giving it a shot because we're going to see some big results here. You know, I think my suggestion early on was that France and Italy should have given it a shot. That's right. Well, they, That's right. they should have stabbed each other. And instead, they were themselves each stabbed. It happens. Well, I would be remiss in not pointing out the Karthik Konath line that uh, Germany and Turkey success correlates uh, most highly together of the two powers. So we're seeing it here. Although we don't see it uh, all that often. So I'm curious to see how it goes. Well, we've seen it some lately yeah. in the sense that both of them have been getting creamed a lot in the last 12 months. That's that's true. Although I think Turkey's making a comeback. Austria has been the, the tough one to play right now. Adam, take us to the fall. Uh oh. Wow. This, this, is, this is this is tactics here, and there's some weird choices by Gary, for example, convoying Brest to North Africa, which is something I just don't know why you do here. But um, covering centers, we got Germany convoying up to Edinburgh, but it looks like they might have screwed that up. But it looks like. It. Yeah, North North like might, forward? yeah, this is one of those things where they probably just clicked wrong in uh, in oh, backstabber, which is just the thing that happens when you're trying to hit those tiny. If you're doing this on a phone or something, trying to hit those tiny spots in England, um, so that's really unfortunate because the convoy to Edinburgh was completely unstoppable. Um, meanwhile, we got Italy now attacking Munich for some reason. Um, Turkey is pulling out of Italy, it looks like, and just kind of 
resetting their position so that they can defend against Germany, maybe doing something. So, uh, you know, really just everyone sort of jockeying here. Actually, what should have been an interesting tactical situation in the Balkans turns into um, Bradley basically saying, OK, I'm out this turn. Yeah, he had a choice to make. He could he could either defend Greece or he could defend Serbia. And so he, I guess, defends Greece and moves Serbia. Or, uh, this may just be some kind of diplomatic play here. I think so. I think it's a diplomatic play. I agree. I think the misconduct is a big problem for Germany, I think. Yes. Um, all right. So uh, we get a German build. Uh, army makes sense. Oh, wow. So I guess my, my point about them stabbing their respective allies is not happening because Army Berlin is clearly a anti-Turkish build in this position. Or, or maybe just defensive against what may be a resurrected IT. You know, he might just have decided he needed another defensive unit. And Munich was under attack. Well, I guess you can pull Burgundy back to Munich, right? So Berlin Yeah, that was the thinking, is yeah. that so now you've got two units you can play with in terms of defense. You can go to Silesia, you can go to Munich. Yeah. All right, we're in the Munich. mountain state. The mountain oh, state. I, I think what's really interesting now would be the dynamic between Germany and France. And is Gary willing to say to Germany, okay, pull your fleets back and you and I can – you know, and, and, and we're okay, you know, I'll you hold Paris for now, but, and I'll defend against the Italians. That, that might be interesting to find out. Oh. oh. Wow. wow. Well, you know who loves this is Isaac, because I don't think he's on the top of the world if this thing goes for another game year. Maybe so. maybe he is, but I, it, it's a little well, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, what what is he going to lose here? And, you know, assuming that he can get things working with Gary again, what is he really going to lose? I think he can get those armies back in position to hold Munich and Berlin, right? So this, this locks down really, really fast. I don't know. I, to me, Army North Africa, that, is not, that's, it's not much of a, not much of an impediment to the Italians doing something here. I don't know. I, if the, if there's still an IT war, then fine. But if there was some chance that there was an IT rapprochement, I'm not sure Bradley wouldn't think he could somehow pull this out. There's still more game years to go in a in a seven hour game. Yeah, I mean, from from the perspective of actual stalemates, right? The the med line is basically done in a year. Mal goes to Portugal, Brest goes to Mal, Liverpool comes down, Paris goes to Gascony. That's a lock, right? So it's just about putting the armies around Munich, which is pretty fast to do. Yeah, I, yeah, I would I mean, say, I way to play Isaac. Way to play Isaac. There, was, there was growth against Germany by the IT. The question, as David said, is could the IT have stood the pressure and held together to, to push back? And it was hard given what Bradley had done. So I can understand uh, why it drew. If, if the decision on the board is to lock this down by Germany and France, though, this board is locked down in, in one year. Yeah, the person I feel sorry for is Gary. I think Gary played well. I don't think it was um, – he could have anticipated the German turnaround like that um, realistically. I think it was a good German turnaround, by the way. Obviously, uh, Germany topped the board, but it, it made a lot of sense. Okay, so for our next game, Kevin's going to take over. Uh, am I right, Kevin? Yep. We get, we got to we, we gotta let you get your one game in, then one game off, one game in. Take a break. Go get a cigar. My, my feet had to get wet. Thanks, yeah. Kev. <laughs> All right. Get him off the screen. Get get us back to uh, to normal here, I, I would like to say. So, um, yeah, and those, so, those army builds uh, by uh, Gary, I forget what year it was. I think that uh, maybe, you know, turned the tide. But fun game. I, David, I agree. Totally, totally fun game. Uh, that, that is more movement in the league game than we normally see. VDL 141, for those that didn't catch it earlier, this is about colorful primates. And uh, the Debraza, I did some research on it because I do, uh, it was founded by a scientist uh, named Debraza. And they are located in the central region of Africa and have a, a very, very colorful face. So uh, there's one other thing that's colorful about them that I can't say on air without being fined by the uh, FBC. <laughs> So, um, Jason Bennett, who is responsible for these uh, names tonight, gets uh, our first spot uh, with uh, Austria. Finished coming in the top seven. Uh, 
JLT taking uh, game two. So this is the uh, 9 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Eastern. Birthday lady, Tanya Gill. Happy birthday, Tanya. Uh, playing uh, France. Uh, no place this year, but I think still owns a perfect VDL record from three years ago. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, everyone's favorite, uh, Wardy in uh, Germany, uh, Rauna Vesky. I haven't seen, I haven't seen Rauna, but uh, coming in 11th. Uh, David, your language is better than me. Maki? Maki Bloom. Maki Bloom. Two Dutch players in the same in the same game, which is awesome. I know that with Bernard, or I have a good uh, friend Bernard who uh, we haven't seen in a while. We got to get him on virtual. And then uh, well-known uh, Brandon, probably the most popular Brandon on DVN, Brandon Dix, uh, coming uh, to us in Turkey today. So uh, Brandon Dix is in my neck of the woods. I can't believe I don't know this guy. So hmm. we'll have to fix that for the next whipping. Uh oh, we gotta we gotta change change the name here. So all right. Uh, to the map. Let's go. Same, same. Uh, oh, let's switch it up. We'll give uh, Adam the uh, spring and David the uh, fall this time. Uh, let her rip. Sure. Um, let's see. In the west, we see the France making a fairly conservative opening, supporting themselves to Burgundy, going out to mid-Atlantic. We again see the army going up to Edinburgh for England, so that's twice in a row. Um, Germany doing some pretty normal stuff. Bounces in Galicia, bounces in the Black Sea, but also following that Smyrna army up to Armenia, which is uh, never particularly uh, something you like to see as Russia. Um, also the Italians moving that Tyrolia Venice uh, armies, which is generally not something you like to see as Austria. So um, there will be a lot of discussions in the fall about what just happened, to say the least. Brown going on walkabout with those two armies. We'll see what that, where they end up. I love that. That's my favorite Italian opening. That's because you're an aggressive son of a gun. Well, I would have named myself in there about uh, uh, at the uh, opening Ed segment at the opening about who who smiles uh, when they. That, that's me, absolutely. Actually, that is you, man. That is you. I love it. Um, and uh, apologies to uh, it's Micah, Micah Bloom. Oh, Micah, good. Yep, we got Micah and Jason helping us out here. And Brandon now lives in D.C. So uh, sorry, Adam. Bummer. Uh, all right, David in the fall. Those are not my uh, normal uh, Italian, although we did that to Molesky at uh, one of the original Weasel Moots, and he hated me for it. So, Which which meant that it was the right thing to do. I, there is a term for that. It's like called the Tyrolean game. It's a Bohemian it's a, Crusher. Bohemian Crusher, that's it. I knew it was something like that. Um, yeah, the let's see, the Turks staying in Armenia without the move, which means... Oh, I see. They went to Romania instead. Wow. Okay. So Ukraine making sure that Ar Armenia didn't slide in there. You know, sometimes the gambit is you let the Russians get into Black Sea and you slide behind them. So the Russians were stopping that. But it's interesting. We've, we've talked before on DBN about do the, does Turkey really want to take Romania instead of taking Bulgaria? And sometimes we've said no. In the West, you know, the question is often who's going to get Belgium? And in this case, an English army convoys to Belgium with Tanya's acquiescence and support. No bounce in Sweden is always an important thing to keep in mind. It's a marker. We knew what it meant last last game that there was a bounce. It meant that there was getting ready to be war up there. Here, we don't know what that means. Adam, how frustrated is uh, uh, Wardy with, uh, with uh, Rana right now? I think you're okay with all of that. I mean, look, you know, that could be an attack on Munich. That could be an attack on Austria. I mean, again, the game's called diplomacy for a reason. You know, this it's a good, it's a decent opening for uh, Italy because it gives them options and it keeps your neighbors talking to you. So, you know, it, it's okay. Let's see what he builds here, right? I mean, okay, the build of the fleet suggests that it is not meant necessarily something that's helpful to you as Germany. On the other hand, if he's working with the Austrians, that could go up to Galicia or Silesia or all kinds of things. I love it. All oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is Belgium not where English armies go to die? Indeed, it is where English armies go to die. Um, for some reason, Tanya goes to Picardy here rather than... Um, rather than the English Channel, which is interesting, maybe because she sniffs out that the English are going to support themselves there anyway, so you might as well just make sure that that, that army dies. Um, Paris supports Burgundy just in case. 
Um, you know, really solid, um, solid play by by um, by Tanya, but conservative. Uh, meanwhile, the Germans do take Belgium. They support themselves up to the Baltic Sea to set up for the uh, the force on Sweden. A lot of arrows and a lot of supports down in the east. Nobody goes to Bulgaria because why would anyone want to take Bulgaria? That's not, you know, that's not a desirable place to be. Um, but indeed, the, the Austrians are forcing themselves into Galicia, not too worried about the Italians there, um, really not worried about the Italians at all. I mean, they vacate Vienna. They try to vacate Trieste as well. Um, unfortunately, they couldn't coordinate themselves with the Russians because one of them could have had Romania, um, but that doesn't happen. And instead, the Turks take the Black Sea and everything else sort of, well, does, uh, yeah, everything else sort of bounces there. You know, the most interesting move for me in spring of 1902 is Kiel to Baltic. If you're going to take Belgium and sort of cooperate with the French in terms of taking Belgium, then why move on the Russians here? I was expecting Helgoland if this is if, if Germany was going in with Russia with France. Yeah, that's a great point. <clears throat> yeah, you're probably not going to get Sweden here. Seems unlikely. And they they don't even really they don't even try. They just defend. Yeah. Um Chanya could not put a finger in every hole in the dike. And so the, the one that she loses is mid Atlantic. Um, so you know, as it probably did the best she could otherwise uh, facing that the um, Germans covering Holland. All right. So they're still anti-English or at least not pro English. And that's what you want. Uh, presumably they're getting ready to build a fleet in Kiel and then put it in Helgoland. In the east, you've got the thing that you were talking about, Adam, where the Turks had set up to go to Sevastopol and, and actually still do take Bulgaria. Interestingly, um, the Italians take a shot at Vienna and are bounced by the Austrians, unless that's some kind of deal, but I don't think so. One thing that, that we're all looking and probably a little puzzled by is Apulia to Venice is what you needed to do here, but isn't it? Not great to have a fleet, uh, you know, sort of in the port in Venice. There's only so many places it can go. Yeah, I mean, I think um, Italy made an odd choice, but is is Tyrolia? Oh, it is supporting Bohemia to Vienna. Okay, sorry. Yeah, that that makes sense. Um, yeah, I don't know that I have a lot to add to that. Let's take a look at the builds. Germany builds an army instead of the fleet. I, I do think that's interesting. That's. That's another thing that you would do if you're anti-Russian. I, I, I think actually this is a really good choice by Wardy. I think letting England and France just go at each other's necks and really neither of them are likely to get a lot out of it and just be able to pick off some dots from Russia in the interim. I, I think it's a nice play, actually. Let them fight and then you can pick whose side you're on later on. Maybe he's worried about Munich again, too. Yeah. David, I... IT. So uh, the Italian uh, fleet movements, uh, spring, fall, both look pro-Turkish. And then in repayment, he gets Fleet Smyrna. Yeah, Fleet Smyrna is is very AT-ish, isn't it? Yeah. Which is AT. fine. I love I love the Astro-Turk alliance myself. And, and honestly, AT makes a huge amount of sense right here, right? I mean, based on where, those, where the units are. Yeah. And Farron that's great news for Jason Bennett. Yeah, Farron would be smiling. Yes. Uh, Yet, wow. Mm. Wow. Yet Italy, for some reason, goes to Gulf of Lyon and Piedmont here. I, I guess that is a choice you can make, maybe trying to make himself useful to the AT and saying, hey, you know, I'll be the front line against uh, against France. Or or maybe there's some negotiation here we're not we're not really uh, understanding. So um, really quite interesting <laughs> moves by the Italian. Uh, but meanwhile, the the uh, Austrians are sitting in the Ionian Sea with a free walk into Tunis or Naples. Um, the Turks have the fleets behind to follow up after that fleet moves forward. Um, in the west, um, Tanya and um, Wardy continue to coordinate. Wardy's giving Tanya Belgium. This is a little bit of an awkward position, but um, I guess makes some sense. And the English are going back to the English Channel from the Mid-Atlantic. I'm trying to see why they're doing it this way. Rather than going from the Irish Sea to the English Channel. Maybe they're trying to um, 
come up with some peaceful way to establish peace with Tanya. It's a possibility. And an agreed upon bounce in mid Atlantic. It's possible. Yeah. yeah. Italy must've just decided to become the tip of the spear for the AT or something might be the yeah. theory here. And you'll, yeah, you see that more. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, David. That's exactly what happened here is that the English now are just pushing forward, pushing North. Um, and we sort of have these semi Western Tripoli moves that entail the Germans getting Sweden in exchange for Tanya getting Belgium. This is just a great play by Tanya to get the build. Um, and I think she has a reasonable argument. Oh no, she's not getting the build because she loses Marseille. Right. So it's a, good argument to stay even here. I mean, really what Tanya needs is another fleet. And if she's working with the English, maybe having an English fleet in the Mao coming around to the West would have been helpful here. Yeah, perhaps so. The, you know, if you were really intending to destroy the Italians and you were Jason Bennett, you would have gone to Naples here, not to Tunis. So this, this, there must be some deal to leave the Italians alive as a, you know, as a Janissary. So the Russians are, are on their way out. The English get to build and have made it through that situation. Interesting that the Russians keep that fleet in Skag rather than in Moscow. I guess that's kind of more, more of an interesting unit to have, though. Uh, pretty easy to kill that fleet. Yeah, unfortunately, I think keeping the two armies is better. At least you can coordinate your own moves that way instead of having one in each of two theaters without you're totally dependent on other people who can't even support yourself to anything. I, I think Skag gets gets destroyed in the spring, most likely, anyway. Yeah. All right. Well, and, I, yeah, and, and, indeed, and indeed it does. I think that's just what you do there because the Western powers are all working together. Um, and so here, Tanya retakes Marseille and loses Spain, which I think is probably a better position uh, for her. Meanwhile, the Turks convoy directly into Naples because they can. And so why not? Um, yeah, that's I mean, I think I think Italy served their usefulness. And now now you take those dots and Austria takes Venice and uh, should be able to take Rome in the fall with the help of themselves and the Turks. So um, just, you know really, really strong AT alliance. If they're able to push through this, this will be really interesting. But it is an AT versus in a Western triple. So something is going to have to break unless this game is going to lock up very quickly. Well, that's why I wonder if if AT should have turned on Italy here. If Italy was going to help you, I mean, Italy's getting ready to get eliminated. They're going to lose Spain also. So they're going to get eliminated, which means yeah. they're not – can you get your units up to the line fast enough if you're AT to defeat this? Of course, Western triples are notoriously hard to stick together. So perhaps that's the the, the gambit that AT is making here. Well, I guess we'll find out. Well, Wardy will have to be diplomatic enough to say, look, you can cut me out, but you're not going to get the benefit of it. It'll, it'll be the East if, if you know. It, well, it'll be really telling to see what Tanya builds here, right? Because ultimately that's, you know, is Tanya going to build another fleet and just send it around the Med to lock things down? Or is she going to try to do something more aggressive, like build another army and, you know, try to push into Germany with England, which is kind of what you do here if you're not overly concerned about, you know, having to force that that Med line too quickly, which, which may be where she's at because... Um, the the closest fleet she's likely to have is going to be either Rome or maybe maybe Tyrrhenian Sea. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So it looks like they take they don't actually take Venice here, which is kind of interesting. They take Rome, but they actually go out try to go out to the Western Med and advance the fleets here. So this is really. Um, uh, Austria, Turkey playing for tempo rather than taking rather than playing for all the dots. Um, they put Russia back into Warsaw to slow down the Western Triple, which which makes a lot of sense. And um, Tanya goes English Channel back to cover Belgium against the English rather than moving that fleet south. So clearly, probably is not too keen on locking this down very quickly. Yeah, that English Channel to Belgium is really important move because it shows that there's not really good EF a good EF relationship. You know, I, I'm a little surprised that they didn't that they didn't um, figure out some way to take Rome here. 
if you're if you're going to do the spring attack, you might as well finish the Italians off. You've you've already made them mad. You might as well kill why, them. Why not? Why not just go straight? Venice supports Tyrrhenian Sea to Rome, and have Ionian go out to Tyrrhenian Sea, like like what you do here, right? I, I'm, it is That's very good. surprising. Yeah, I didn't. I, I don't don't think I agree with that. I'm not sure I agreed with this with the spring 1904 stab of Italy, but once you do it, finish Take them out. Take them out. What well, are you again, we, we could be quibbling here. They're still in a pretty decent position when you've got Tanya, frankly, not going to the mid Atlantic. After that's an important missing yeah. move here. And it's not that they didn't, it's not that she didn't go. She also went backwards to Belgium, which is a threat to the both Holland and the North Sea. The one uh, Lyon to Western Med might not have been known as well because you think, oh, maybe they'll try to defend Marseille. Um, did but not say. But so what? I mean, I mean, the Italian unit in the, in Western Med doesn't do anything for you. I mean, I guess maybe you're not yeah. expecting to get balanced. I guess but. that's right. Because if I don't, if I think I can just slide into Western Med, I'll do that as opposed to, like you said, tactically eliminating. Then you're a space, but like you know, Turkey's in Tyrrhenian instead of Austria right now. There's no difference in position. But if Austria thinks they're getting in yeah. to Western Med, you take the chance. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah. Tanya will get Tanya will get her uh, her fleet build. Italy, what is Italy at this point? So now Italy's more mad than than before. You tip of, tip of the spear was one thing, but I think that's changed. What is what does Italy uh, keep here? Well, does Tanya build a fleet here? Are we sure? I think you probably do. I think you got to build a fleet here, <laughs> almost regardless of what your plans are. I think she needs another fleet yeah. as opposed to a fourth army. I think so. Uh, Italy, I mean, you probably keep Lyon and hope that that the other side will keep you alive. I mean, the other units are pretty useless. So. Yeah. yeah, you have to become you have to try to become the point of the spear again and, and hope that you're of some usefulness, because otherwise I agree. I don't really see what you're going to be able to accomplish here unless, you know, unless one of A or T are getting ready to turn on each other. And then maybe you could have some kind of relationship. But I think the best chance is to keep Lyon. All right, we did it in the last game. Let's do it in this one too. In, uh, winter nineteen oh four. Who uh, who do you who do you like? Is it Jason versus the field? I, it is hard to not like Jason Bennett in any tournament he's playing in, and I'm, I'm he's currently leading the Tour of Britain. He is a very talented player, so I, I would say he's in good position. You know, but so is Brandon. Um, I, what what I'm not I'm just not sure what's going on in the West. Or I might, you know, want to consider picking a Tanya Gill or somebody, but I just don't know that there's enough going on there. And if there's no AT war, one of those guys is going to win this game with a board top. Maybe yeah, even mean, with an AT war. I, I, I'm kind of with David and thinking it's going to be one of AOT. I don't want to write off either England or France at this point in time because there are expansion routes for both of them and and tanya is you know you write off tanya at your own peril so i think that either of them have a chance here but a lot of it is really dependent on how strong that at decides to push across the board all right i think they're fixing to i think they're fixing to push pretty strong it's my my and, and, and indeed that's exactly what we've got going on here though i though interestingly terrenian c to Tunis and Ionian to, Na to Naples rather than Tyrrhenian Sea is a little bit weird, isn't it? It's it's actually very weird, except except that they knew this would work as a way to advance their units. They weren't; it wouldn't be sure that Tyrrhenian Sea would work. So yeah, shell shocked, shell shocked after last time. I think they. Yeah, but is, but is really but is going to, is go, Tunis is guaranteed is getting the fleet conga line bounced. I, I mean, I guess it's a little bit better. You know, they're worried about the French getting into Piedmont and then making sure they got a defensive line. I guess moving the, the fleets, I can see an argument for doing this, is my point. Well, I guess the point is, if you, but why not Tyroli to Piedmont? And then you can do this, you can still piff uh, Bohemia and move Trieste up to Tyroli to, to get rid of the unit. And then you move, uh, you, you take Venice the other way through Rome or you take it in the fall from Budapest. This lead is this lead to a stalemate at this point? Like nothing's going to break. I don't really like Budapest holding, but I don't like anybody holding as you guys know. Uh, well, I guess, I guess it is interesting, right? Letting, why do you let that 
French unit into Piedmont. I mean, I guess you can destroy it now and force it to rebuild back in the front. But Well, this was the only way to destroy Bohemia was to use all three Austrian armies to do it. So you, you're ranking. No, I, see, I see. I see. You do need to use the third unit. Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. sorry, Kevin. What was your question that I totally ignored? Um, you forgot, didn't you? Yeah. It's probably it, must, it must not have been an important question. I was just trying to fill time. I think. Oh, yeah. oh, all right. I like doing that behind the scenes. I can ask what I want. And no one hears it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I see, I see the uh, the comment from Bradley uh, Grace here that I see a three dot stab from Turkey here, and 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 that's absolutely right. I don't think we're going to see it, and, and indeed we don't. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't, and because Brandon may think he can get in a better position than the one he's in. To, yeah, know, I, don't, I don't. I don't. I, I agree with Brandon. I don't think you stab here. Yeah, I think I think it'll be a little early because he he can now he's in the Tyranian. If he wanted to stab now, he could take four centers, right? I mean, if he wanted. <laughs> I'm not saying necessarily you want to do that. You would you really would make sure you've got a good read on the West before you do that. Um, Marseille to Gascony, Piedmont to Marseille because they she was worried that Piedmont was going to get piffed. I guess was the theory there. What is the deal with English Channel to Belgium, north to Belgium, which would seem like an agreed upon move? But why do we have Norway following to North Sea if that's an agreed upon balance? Because it doesn't have anything else to do. Yeah. And if she missed orders, I'd rather be in a better position than yeah. Our position. Yeah. I think that's right. Although, again, we still, it's, it's still, uh, all of that's a little odd that that's what you're doing. Now, part of it is when you've got a Western triple. And England was not on, you know, didn't have a Western triple uh, build armies from the beginning thing. You got four fleets. What are you supposed to do? <laughs> and that's what Tanya's thinking. He's like, well, he's got four fleets. What is he supposed to do? You know, and hopefully the theory is you plow into uh, Christopher Ward if you really want center. I, I, think, I think that's what you do here, though, isn't it? Well, again, yes, but it's not going to be, you'd have to do it in a spring turn and then be able to support yourself in a fall mm -hmm. turn or something. I don't know. We'll see. And we will. Does this game lock up here? I wouldn't. I wouldn't if I were Brandon. No. You know, ATs are great, except that in the long run, Austria's got issues unless unless they've been able to keep a bunch of units back in reserve. Well, Turkey is in much less of a position to stab right now than they were a turn ago. And because they're worried about Western Med, is that what you're saying? Not because they're worried about Western Med, but because their armies are so far advanced. They don't have the armies to take things in Austria or to hold them. I mean, you can take Greece and Rome here. But so that's what, the Romania and Moscow. Hey, if, you to, if you're going to lose Moscow, sure. Ionian to Greece, take, take Tunis, take Rome. With, take, in theory, you could still do it. I, I, again, I'm not sure I would. The game, the game is still pretty young here. And Tanya seems to have a foothold now where any freedom allows her to move north. I mean, all of England becomes hers shortly. I think the question is, is Yelty just sit around and do nothing, twiddle his thumbs for the next four game years? Well, I made a promise to uh, Adam uh, that we would get him out of here on time. So we, will, right, we, will vent, we will venture to say that this game is not long on the tooth. Yeah, I mean, this again, it all continues to make sense here. Um, I think it's an interesting, you know, again, I, about units holding. And I think probably, uh, uh, you know, if Tanya wanted to get to the Mid-Atlantic, she could have supported it from the Western Med, um, chose not to, whether that was intentional or not, I don't know. Um, but meanwhile, it's really just about holding the middle of the board at this point. Austria advances. Um, Silesia is held, I believe. Um, it's Western triple trying to hold back the AT. That's it. It's just tactics. Well, it's see. tactics. And at what point does Brandon decide to put the hammer down and take the board top for himself if he wants to try that? Mm -hmm. And the answer is not yet. Yep. So Tanya, what Tanya does here is uh, very sensible. She's again 
focused on getting her units in position to hold the line, which means having a fleet in Portugal. I think this is really fleet in Portugal is such a critical position that I think a lot of people forget about for holding the med line from the north. You need a fleet in Portugal to do this. Um, so Tanya gets into that position, gets her other fleet into Spain. This is as good as locked up with having the fleet in the other, the, the English fleet in Irish um, from the backside. Portugal supports Spain, Gascony supports Marseille, Burgundy will help hold Munich going forward. Um, this is a dynamic lockup right now uh, with respect to everything on this board. So um, let's let's see how it ends. I agree. What is, Austria pulls a useless army. Turkey yep. adds a useless army. Yeah, unless Turkey's going to stab, this game is a lock at this point. Yep. Yep. That's good. Good AT alliance play. You know, I I like to see different time. I'm not just an alliance player. I don't, don't don't just like to see those, but I do like to see a good alliance game, where you where you pick an alliance partner, you go and you crush people, and get to the line, and it's just well played. And the West, you know, the reason none of them top this board is that they never really had anybody into an, a strong alliance against the other one. <coughs> Yeah, Adam, Wardy fought alone the whole time. EF fought to you. I think, was it your comment earlier? Let E and F fight it out and maybe uh, Germany can pick up some units. I, I mean, that would, but it never really materialized, right? Because the AT just went so strong, they had to really Western triple it. So in, in France and England never really got entangled for that long. I mean, there was sort of a little bit going on, but really it, it ended end of 1902, early 1903. So Wardy never really had the ability to push his units into Russia and get some advantage and then work with one of them against the other. Yeah. Excellent. We'll bring back uh, Ed on to see uh, if we can get some uh, critique on, on uh, my hosting skills. Uh, oh, he's got, see, he's got his drink. So he's ready there. I gotta, I gotta get mine at this point. I'm down at the bottom. So. And he's muted. Oh, he's so muted. It's all, it's all uh, the fault. He had his act together, but he does not. I thought I was doing a bad job until I uh, heard you, Kevin. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't mute. My, I don't mute myself. I, 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 a la Brian Pravel. You don't mute yourself, hey. and many of us wish you would. So <laughs> we're not really talking too much about Brandon Dix, but they're doing. Brandon and Jason are doing well in the league because alliance play in VDL is a is a good strategy. They're both employing it. Brandon's got a lot of great results. We already talked about Jason, uh, impressive AT here. Um, and so I'm, I'm happy for him. Yeah. Particularly yeah. earlier in the season, it can be, it can be a great play. It can be a great play anytime, but earlier in the season in particular. All right, Adam. Well, uh, we, uh, thank you for, uh, participating tonight. Uh, Glad that you have your priorities uh, set up to uh, to help us out here and uh, and go enjoy the rest of your evening. It's been a pleasure as always. See you. All right, Good. Kevin. What do we have next on League Night? We have uh, we got the French, or we got another another VDL. One more VDL, and then we'll see uh, Press League. Oh boy! All right, we got Austria. Isaac Ukes. We've seen a little bit of him tonight. Uh, ben Kelman out of Ann Arbor, Michigan, playing England. Partner next to Cody Green, the Iron Man. Austria unknown back, now playing Germany unknown. Oh my God, we got audacious hand. Uh, Cedric playing Italy, one of his favorite countries. We'll see what happens there. Oh, and then couple that with the uh, Delta, uh, <laughs> the Delta variant, Christian Brown. And a little, a little return back. You know, it's addictive. Back on the, went back to the heroin. Saren Kwok as Turkey couldn't couldn't stay off the wagon for on the wagon for too long. Gonna be a so, good game. So great to see Saren back in the league, though. Wow, absolutely. And so this is the uh, this is the game I was talking about. We had Ben uh, and Cody and Christian all in our Wednesday night. Uh, Chicago game, and I know two of them were next to each other. We'll see how that affects uh, their play today. All right. I think this East is going to be a mess. I mean, I can't see – I can't envision any world where Saren and Cedric would get along, and I can't envision any world where Christian gets along with any of the three of them uh, as partners. So, like, it's going to be uh, – I'm looking forward to it, David. Are you? I am, although I don't, I don't know that you went to sell Christian short. He can get along with anybody for a while. 
<laughs> if they're named Christian. Oh. Christian gets along with Christian. We have three Christians in Chicago, so it's, it's it works <laughs> well for him. You, you, you only have three Christians in Chicago? I, I, didn't, I, I, really didn't right. think, I really didn't think it had changed that much, but I hadn't been there in a while. No. <laughs> McDon no, Mc, uh, Klein, McDonald, uh, who else do we have? Former former DixieCon champion. Oh, you Kevin, mean- uh, I'm going to make you do the fall and the computer magic, as they say from Spinal Tap. That was Viv who did. Who, I'm I, can, I got I got two hands. I got two hands. I can do two. <laughs> look, if we could do Spinal Tap all night, if even anyone knew what it was, David, look at this aggressive Turkish opening. Is it? It's really quite frightening. The size of the. Tur- <laughs> it's all uh, a matter of perspective. It is. Uh, well, Saren, look at you with your Sundstrom opening into the Armenia and Black Sea, and it's and it working because Christian holds in Sevastopol. How many times do we really see that anymore? Uh, Cedric the does the uh, little Trieste thing. We'll see if if Audacious Hand is joining the meta of the virtual hobby from you know probably eighteen months ago, where this became the became the standard move. Um, we this is the first English opening we've seen that wasn't the full Churchill. This is sort of the half Churchill where you go to where you go to London. I mean, I'm sorry, go to Yorkshire with the army. And then the French move, I think, is one of the many of one of the many standard French openings that there are in the world is this one. We had a, we had a debate. Uh, the French uh, player from uh, Wednesday night opened this way against Cody, who I believe was in Germany. Uh, and West West, West uh, Ketchum was uh, France, and he explained he likes this as a defensive opening. Yeah. Um, you know, be able to protect against Brest. Uh, Saren Kwok, the current alpha weasel in Chicago, so uh, learned a thing when she was uh, here uh, uh, last late last year. So picked up the uh, the Sunstrom and Christian Brown. You always can expect that the unexpected will happen. Okay, fall, Kevin. Tell us what happens in the fall. Uh, full on defense. Christian uh, is fine with, with with just bottling things up because uh, there certain certainly was some discussion with uh, with Austria. Uh, I'm, I'm going to think that one of them is going to no, they're all going to attack them at some point. So that 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 will be short lived. And it will be uh, it will be a T is my prediction there. Um, convoy where English uh, armies go to die again, supported by the French army in, uh, in Burgundy, uh, and a bounce in Sweden. So Christian certainly on the the outs on all sides. You know the bounce in Sweden is an interesting choice when you know that Russia is under pressure in the south. And you really would only do that as Germany if you know you've got an EG or getting ready to plow into Russia with. I don't think an EG move is convoying the army to Belgium. So I, if Germany has thought he's got a strong or, or the unknown X has got a strong EG, you don't usually do that. with. You, instead, you do that with a convoy. Well, sometimes you do it with a convoy to Belgium, but not where you're moving Ruhr back to Munich. Uh, score one for me on calling Cedric Saren uh, – Discord. Look what poor uh, Saren did to Cedric here. Yeah, you can have Greece. I'll convoy you in. Instead, yeah, but isn't Cedric just misordering? I mean, what's Ionian doing? That's, that's, that's just Cedric doing some kind of goofy misorder. Well, no. What's out? What's Bulgaria? Do? Is Bulgaria? I oh, I thought Bulgaria was doing something else. I think yeah. I think Saren intended to help him into Greece to block the Austrians. Nope. And, and, and actually, uh, take Greece. And instead, there was a convoy to a t- Tunis. Uh, and got it wrong. Cedric messed up. It happens to happens to the best of us, and Cedric. Oh, seriously, all of us make screw ups, and that's just part of the game. It happens even more in face to face than it does in this setting. The sad thing is, either convoy would have worked, whether it be to True. Tunis or Greece. Uh, <laughs> instead, what it got doesn't nothing. work is this. This does not work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go ahead, David. Spring. Now, oh, wait till we see the builds here. But I'm assuming. So. Yeah, let's see. Oh, gosh. Two armies from Germany. M- many of us are going. When will we ever learn? Oh, my gosh. I mean, there can be. I think there is a theoretical situation where you're under extreme duress and you can do that as a turtling move. But, gosh, it just limits your options so much, even if you think you've got an EG, which he does think that. You still do, you'd still need that second fleet to go to the Baltic. Come on. 
otherwise fleet Smyrna from Saren. So after the support was accidentally not taken, retribution will follow. Yeah, that is that is not a I well, we talked about this in the last game. That is not really an IT bill, particularly if you put it in Smyrna as opposed to even Khan. Oh yeah. Well, David, the predictable thing happens here. Uh Ben taking advantage of an unknown unknown. <laughs> Yeah, those, those armies, I mean, that's maybe you do that if you think you're in a Western triple, I guess that's the theory, and he ain't in no Western triple. Uh, <laughs> Romania, Helgoland, this is, this is Cody and Ben saying, oh, well, then we'll take that stuff. And, you know, Germany still thinks he's got an EG, still bl blocking the Swe uh, Russians in Sweden. This is why the blocking thing in Sweden is only, it's, it's, a, it's a risky thing to do. You might need the Russians unless you're sure you've got the EG. Um, in the east, Cedric recovering actually correctly orders a convoy to Albania. Look, Cedric could convoy and everything. Venice to Piedmont, uh, <clears throat> you know, you got to keep the French honest, particularly if they build a fleet in Marseille, which they have done. So now the Italians are facing, you know, Cody in the mid, uh, and we'll see what that means. You know, is that something that Cody can make benefit of before? Ben gets too much out of this, and Ben decides that France is, is open. We'll see. I've, I've, I'm excited to see this. Two, two French fleets in the south uh, is a thing of 20 years ago, which we saw a lot more. Uh, it, the, just uh, Italy, Italy, France has been too uh, passive, so I'm excited to see a different style of play here. You know, I don't think it's always a great move for France to do this, but I also think that like many things, it should it shouldn't be on the forbidden list. There are situations where going to the med early can pay off for sure. Okay, I actually I'm going to say this. I feel bad for Christian Brown. Go back. I mean, he <laughs> loses Warsaw, even though he's putting the he's putting Austria into Romania. He's under attack. He's got to be just enraged at this point. <laughs> Well, let's let's see what the uh... oh man, and now he doesn't even get it, and lose and loses Sev. Yeah, I would. I might have been tempted just to kick the Austrians out of Warsaw there, and 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 and, and just let Saren have Sev. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Kevin, so... let's go through these. Uh, you you got to put your analyst hat on here. It's, it's look at this for Cedric. Seven. Cedric, yeah. I this hardly knew. You. Cedric, I hardly knew you, man. I hardly knew you. Well, I mean, he's getting so Tunis wasn't Tunis wasn't Italian to start with, so it it just flies a different flag from the beginning. Uh, not not uh, not normal, but uh, not unheard of. Uh, he will be getting he will be getting two builds for the uh, successful. Uh, no, no, he loses Trieste, so he only gets one. Oh, and he loses Venice there. No, I should look at the whole map rather than uh, just one spot before commenting. Um, I mean, that's a choice that you could make. Yeah, it is a choice. Yeah. Um, but still has a has a friendly Turk, so uh, maybe maybe the, the the Turks will will float up behind and say I'm here to help, um, and we'll see how long that lasts as well. Uh, France gets Holland. I, we were going to talk about uh, Germany definitely losing Holland. Well, France uh, gets that, while England takes Denmark. Ooh, nice. And uh, Christian does take Sweden, but uh, let's see, loses one. Yeah, support. He did, it, it was cut, but it, there was an attempt. I'm sorry, Christian. <laughs> yeah, this is this is another good strong alliance play in this case by the EF Leviathan. Um, you know, Tyrolia to Venice is really the kicker here, and you can understand why Cedric. I mean, why uh, the unknown player, which may be Doug again, is just sort of dot grabbing because he's trying to stay alive. You can understand that, but man, it's got to be disappointing if you're Cedric, who's you know getting builds in Bal the Balkans and thinking, well, I, if I can just build my two units, I can. Maybe get back in this game, but man, no. look if he needed a dot, he should have gone to Cedric and said, "Support me into Vienna or, or something." You know, like you know, try. I'm a. You know, it's particularly not, galling when Cedric knows that he could have just ordered Piedmont to Venice if he was at all worried about this. Yeah, well, <laughs> even if you're not, even if you're not worried about it, there's very little to near zero chance of getting Marseille here, right? I mean, there's... yeah, he was just he was maybe hoping. I don't know what he was hoping to do with that, actually. Yeah. I think well, a supported if he was going to do anything, an unwanted support to block another fleet uh, build in Marseille would have been the, the correct. Yeah. No, that, that that makes sense. 
Mark that down, David. That, that's the only time anyone's ever said anything about it for me. All right. No, no, no. no. I, I say you make sense all the time. I just don't say it in front of you. <laughs> okay. Turkish build is going to be interesting. Uh, Fleet, Fleet Smyrna Army Con. Fleet Marseille Army Paris. I can I can Maybe see all of that, and, and probably the Austrian fleet goes away. Army Berlin. Well, he's losing one. Oh, that's fine. Well. Yeah, yeah. Too. I need a bigger screen. That's all. Yeah, I'd be I'd be tempted to lose the Baltic fleet. I think, although it's awfully useful to try to coordinate. But on uh, the only way the only way to defend here is to try to be in, in army power in the middle of the board, or yeah. around Munich, to try to survive. Scandinavia is dead at that point, and then you're dead right behind it. Oof. Plus, you want to try to turn England against France, and the way to do it is to say, hey, I don't even have this fleet anymore, so yeah. leave me alone. Yeah, I'm, if I'm England, I'm just filtering things through right now. Otherwise, it looks like all of the builds that the disbands were pretty much what we thought. We didn't talk about England, but of course, that you want to build an army here and put another yeah. army on the continent. Yeah. Holland looks nice. Hmm. Gosh, you know, to be honest, I was sort of expecting some different moves from England, but this, I guess it was a guess to make. You weren't sure that Munich was going to support Kiel, although they supported Kiel last time, I think. Um, I guess if he wants to stay friendly with the Russians, this was the only way to do this. I, frankly, I sort of thought he was going to go ahead and convoy to Norway and, and, you know, and then use the other three English units against whoever. That's what I kind of thought we were going to see, but so it's interesting that we're seeing this. Still good I news. Thought for I thought we'd see Holland and Kiel, an English unit in Holland, Ruhr and Burgundy set it up. But so that, that would have been a lot better, Holland to Kiel and then backfill with, yeah, that would have been a lot better move. But they didn't take Ionian. I was going to say, a part of me thinks Ben doesn't really want to advance very far. I think he's more than happy for France to, to to get to go to move further west, east. I guess. Yeah, and, and uh, also leaving uh, Russia to fight Saren, who has no enemies on the other side too. So, uh, Sar Saren's moving away from Christian. Yep. Yeah. Christian, see, working his diplomatic diplomatic tongue. Yeah. Hey, look, somebody somebody finally ordered to Romania. <laughs> Cedric, way to go, man. Except for he's losing Rome for it. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is like this is like uh, the Germans coming to help the Italians in 1944. Uh except it didn't actually work uh for either country then or it now. All right. Well. <laughs> uh well, he supported here. Look at that. He supported uh, Naples, so uh, you know, it, 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 they did come to help. I don't know that I've ever seen Germany own Venice and Rome when they're losing their home countries like this. I, I don't know that I've ever seen such a thing. Still First of all, old. he has all his home centers. Second, yes. of, all, second yes. of all, he's not even protecting Venice. Uh, but it does appear to me, David, Gavin, what do you think? It looks like it's an Eastern quadruple now, a little late forming. Um, but this is what we've got. Well, David, the best part about that, too, is he doesn't get to build for it. I know it. <laughs> I know it. he's just just killing an Italian unit. Yeah. Uh, oh. Well, it's all right. So Ben 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 wisely lets uh, Christian uh, takes of, uh, and then uh, in exchange takes Sweden for it. Now having the army over there, um, little slowing slowing that down, but maybe it was worthwhile to to let him build that. And Saren walks Saren walks away. So um, yeah. You don't often see a five army Congo line at the stalemate line that all of the un all of the moves work. You don't often see that happen, particularly multinational Congo line. That's super impressive. But look, I mean, we didn't really point out Saren did it because now Christian can get. Well, I think the idea was he would get a build, but he's losing. He'll have three, so yeah, he no, he won't get a build, right? He has to yeah. keep the. Yeah. Uh, even work I guess out. it might have been the idea that let's let's make sure he can keep that fleet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yes, and Christmas colors too. It's, I know it's June, but Christmas in June for the uh, red and green. Across oh, that's very cute. Okay, let's go to the winner. Uh, Turkish bill. All right, that makes sense. English it, you know, it's surprising to me that we're only in 1903. It feels like a hell of a lot of stuff's happened, and there's only been six moves in the game. Blame Cedric. 
<laughs> I mean, that is a mixed up. That is a mixed up multinational mess in the East to have only happened after six moves. All right, I'll make a prediction that uh, unknown does not own any Italian centers at the end of 04. Just a prediction. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't know if that's true or not. We'll nope, it'll get me. <laughs> I, I think he, the, the road. The, he's on the road. That Munich army is now in Naples. Uh, that's fantastic, <laughs> David. What do we see here? Make sense of this map for us. It, it continues to. It continues to be interesting that that um, they're not that you know England and France are not even trying to take a German center here. You know, if you're if you're gonna go. To the Baltic, why not just support yourself in there with using Denmark to support yourself in there? Because you don't really want the Russian guy in Baltic, I don't think. Well, I guess maybe you do. Well, no, you don't. Um, I know the Russians supported the English, I mean, convoy the English to Prussia. So maybe there's some, there was some theory of the universe there. But since you're going up there to take the stuff anyway, why not just keep, get that Russian fleet out of the Baltic? Like you'd rather put your, have your own fleet in the Baltic. Yeah, retreats back to, uh, Province touching St. Petersburg, maybe keep it keep it away from home. Yeah, and then Holland, I, Denmark expected Holland to attack uh, Kiel, which was unordered. A, th two supports onto uh, onto Ruhr, unneeded. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder where Bulgaria to serve. I wonder where that guy that that unit where Sarin's intended to have that unit land. Well, it's got to block France from getting into Trieste. Yeah, maybe. Well, it's, 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 she's not wanting to take anybody's center. She just goes to Albania. Yeah. Killing the French fleets killed. You know, that we've talked about this on DBN before. Those French fleets that get way advanced like that can be cool. But if they end up getting eliminated, man, that's a lot of wasted effort. Yeah. To be out there and not actually be able to survive. Yeah, but a bit of a blessing in disguise. I mean, I, I started to think here that Cody was looking more and more appetizing to Ben, but now. He's in Kiel. He's going to have a rebuild. Um, you know, we'll see. Um, I find it curious uh, that England, Ben is leaving St. Petersburg, right? I mean, we're seeing that happen with him putting Christian into Warsaw. That is a uh, pretty consequential move here. While he takes Romania, the Delta variant has struck again. There goes the Eastern Quadruple. Yeah, well, the eastern the eastern situation is not great. I, I would I would point out that the, that Kevin, you were right. The Germans did not hold Venice and Rome anymore, but they do have Naples. <laughs> I think my prediction was own no Italian centers. So, like my play, my predictions are not great. I believe it was somewhat faulty. But yeah. what <laughs> but what Christian has done here really has changed this game. Because if there was some theory of the universe where the, where the East could hold, you know, Saren sort of keeping all the little chicks in line there and holding things, that, not anymore. I just don't see how that works. Now it's time to attack Saren. What do we see? Two armies? Moscow Sev? I would not. I would think so. Maybe a fleet Maybe, maybe even fleet Sev. Maybe even fleet Sev and just go whole hog. That's the, way, that's the David Hood way. There we go. There it is. There it is. I, I, Sarah is pulling her hair out right now, though. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh! Or or her hair's on fire, or some other hair analogy is going on. Her <laughs> hair metaphor is happening. All right, you now know, rest, rest. Rest. Cody, Cody, what you doing, man? What you gonna do, Cody? He couldn't. He couldn't build. He couldn't build it in Marseille. I so he's, he's, I understand, but you know this. But it gives you an opportunity here if you wanted to rearrange. Yeah. I'm not sure you do, but it's it's fun yeah. to have choices. Was there was there a reason it's there? Oh yeah, it had to hold, so couldn't 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 back out for it. All right, and you, you could stab him just yeah. to, it would have been an unusual stab. I think. it would not have been. It would not. I just all I was saying is it made some for some interesting choices. Yeah, but now they've uh, Cody's taken Munich here. Wow. Yeah, all, all things. the English take Berlin. Yep. So EF cleaning up here with you know some Christian assistance. Saren's got to go back. I mean, she's got she's got Christian Brown problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, it's just a big mishmash. I mean, it, I don't know where the Christmas tree people are going to go. With I know, think it's everyone against Christian in the East now. 
I think that's what's happening. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it was. But Ben was. Ben's probably on side. I think. I think Livonia or Prussia supports uh, Warsaw here. I don't think he. I don't think Christian loses it. I think this is a. What are we going to call it? An F E R fur. Well, but ben, Ben's, Ben's got to now figure out what he's going to do, though. He's not topping the board, and all of his enemies are dead. Well, if I'm Cody, I'm like, <clears throat> it's looking on my – those English dots are looking mighty tempting. Yeah. Mid-Atlantic to Irish, supported attack on Belgium right now. Nope. Bouncing Belgium. Well, we say goodbye to the German army in uh, the German expeditionary force. Oh. Yes, but now they've got an expeditionary force in the Balkans. <laughs> so everything's fine. Everything's fine from the German perspective. They the reserves have come through. Another day. <clears throat> you know, the, the, Balkans only- were not, the Balkans were not multinational enough. You're now going to have five different powers. With Wait a minute. No, the, Tur- the Italians are gone from the Balkans. Nope, Budapest. No, they do in Budapest. Yep. So you got five different flowers of the Balkans. This is this is in, insanely fun if you are England or France, mostly France. I just and want it's to point insanely out, fun for us to watch. Probably not insanely fun to play if you're in the East. Can you put the uh, little magnifying glass on the Italian boot in Tunis? Oh, Puglia supports Rome to Naples. Okay. Tyrrhenian to Rome, but then Tunis to Tyrrhenian, and then look what Saren does, getting in to Tunis, getting that her built. Spectacular guess. Now, maybe you didn't have anything to do with that unit, honestly. What else would you do with that unit, unless you were su- maybe supporting the German with it or something? Yeah. The best part, Saren gets two. So Chris going yeah. whole hog, Saren now gets two for that. Ben wow. gets one up. Ben gets one up north. So that was if Cody was going to go, that was that was the time to go. Well, yeah, because now that you, when you went down to Western Med like that, you've yeah. lost your ability. Oh, sure. but I'm not sure it was the right thing to do anyway, because you knew England was building. Unless you, I guess, if you've been successfully taken Belgium, would have been different. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's only 1905. You're not you're not running against the clock yet. But I mean, that puts so if a stab there takes Belgium and is in. Irish C, that's plus two. England is even. England is coming for France now, by the way. They are coming for France now. Yep. I'll, I'll bet you 20 bucks he's coming for France. Well, that okay, so this is prediction time at winter 1905. We didn't do it at the end of 1904. Uh, ben has a choice to make, right? Yes. And you're, you're saying he's going stick to with, stick with Christian. I believe so because he now assuming that Christian's going to stay pointed in the same direction can be an interesting assumption to make. But I think that Ben is going to believe that Christian can help keep Saren down while he takes the board top away from Cody. That's my thinking. Uh, my, I'll go the other way. I think EF further locks up. They grind to a shared top. Since Ben's in second, he doesn't need to play for every point, every top at this point. He just needs to keep getting consistent results. I'll go share top. Okay. I, I, I was going to say, I think he stabs Christian. Uh, um, yeah. Another- yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I certainly think so after you build the army. I agree with you. Uh, yeah. All right, David, spring. Uh, well, I lost my 20 bucks. Life. Nobody took the bet, thank goodness, but I <laughs> would have lost my 20 bucks. Um. I, I'm not sure I agree with Ben here is the point. I, I, it is easier to take stuff in your own backyard in this situation and let Christian continue to pound his head against Saren um, would be my, would have been my thinking, but whatever, what do I know? Yeah. Um, the uh, French do continue on with what they're doing. You know, the Tunis was fun. It, get, it allowed the Turks to take, take that build, but they weren't going to be able to keep it. Um, Germany goes back to the Italian adventurism of, of <laughs> back in Venice. Back in to Venice. Back in, that's German territory. <laughs> but otherwise I think, you know, the, the decision here was that was Ben's decision. He's made it. I think it's just time to see how it turns out. 
Yeah, then he gets Warsaw out of it, he gets Moscow out of it, he gets St. Pete out of it. So that gets him to 11, and, you know, Cody's got to get two more, which maybe they, you know, figure out a way to share it at the end. But, um, yeah, there's – Belgium. Belgium. That's a, one. that's a one. That's not a yeah. – Well, you got Tunis also. Also yep. got Priest. Oh, oh, wow. God. Holy cow. Now, the Germans are still living in Venice because it's all about how long does Germany survive, and the answer is they've survived to the end of 1906. But, Cody, that's that's quite a move at plus three. Um, I think the, I think the, the question here for Ben is going to be woulda, coulda, shoulda. Because, I mean, I understand what the, 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 the decision that was made. Uh, he had two legitimate decisions, but I just think it would have given him a more – an easier shot at a board top by take by trying to take it from Cody there. I think he gave him Belgium. Yep. I, I don't think he foresaw Trieste. Well, all right. Is it solo watch time? I mean, I know it's VDL. We don't get too many of them. I don't, I think, don't so. think Ben is going to let himself get out of position so much that that's going to happen. Yeah. Fleet breast. Uh, I guess you have to build it. So, oh yeah, yeah. Keeps going south. Ah, oh, poor Venice. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, gets disbanded. Right. Yeah, yeah. Done. Because it retreated to Apulia with the Turkish retreating there too. You know, I, I, maybe Ben can figure out a way to get more centers here than Cody, and, and or maybe he, as you all, one of y'all said, he doesn't care because he's doing well in the league and he, he's okay making a making a, an alliance play with Cody with Ben coming in second. Maybe he thinks that's okay in this situation. I don't know. I mean, look, he, he has he can get Keel and Holland, Belgium, right? I mean, uh, there's lots of options for him if he wants to stab right now. True. What's gar what's guaranteed? Any of them? No, none, right? Keel is guaranteed. Because you can support it in. Oh, yeah, for Baltic. Yeah. You can't cover them all. I guess no. he tries. Oh, uh, look, Ben try. Oh, it must have been an agreed. I think that's yeah, I, th I don't I think that's all agreed. You don't do the self bounce and keel unless that's all agreed to. Yeah. And Norwegian's not even moving. So this is this has been making the alliance play, which is, you know, which is fine. I'm I, that is a decision that's that's totally up to him. Um, France just continues to dominate. There, look at all that. Yep. Wow. All right. So now we're can, can does he have four dots <laughs> in two years? No, this it, this is six and a half hours. This could go as quick. This could go as long as I think nineteen eleven or twelve. Well, nineteen ten or nineteen eleven is the usual end. Yeah. But, this yeah, is the that's end. fine. That's yeah. fine. I, 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 frankly, I don't think Cody was going to be able to to get four centers here, yeah. um, because Ben Ben would have attacked unless Cody took the draw. <laughs> but what a great what a great result for Cody Green, who played this game really well, and obviously not just diplo um, not just tactically and you know making the right moves in the Mediterranean and the strategic choices to go to the Mediterranean early, like we were talking about, but the diplomatic game of making sure that Ben stayed on side with him uh, was just an impressive game from Cody Green. I couldn't Cody agree Green. more. That's why I highlighted him earlier. Seven games, zero tops. And, uh, uh, you know, only one elimination. But we said stick to it. Keep coming back. Keep playing. Build up your rep. He's doing that. He's aligning with a more experienced player. I don't think he got this game because he out-tricked anybody. He just, uh, you know, was able to take advantage of Eastern chaos. Uh, but so did Ben, taking advantage of, uh, you know, the situation with Christian Brown and realizing it was it made sense for Christian to turn. Um, so, look, really good EF, good alliance play, great win by Cody. I'm happy for him. It was great to see Saren back. There wasn't anything she could do about this. She did what she could to try to, you know, as I said, round up all the little chicks in the East and get them faced in the right direction, but she just couldn't pull that off given the personalities in, in play. That, that, that was a fun, that was a fun one for sure. So, and, and the system, the scoring system 
rightly uh, denotes a, a large, large score for Cody there. So. Well played. Sorry, producer hats taking over. So Ed, all right, what are we going to do? We, we've had some switch rounds. Uh, David, I'll, do, I'll do another. I'll do another if you want me to. No problem. Yeah, David, you want to break for this first one? Sure. All right, we'll get you out of here. But before we do, let's we'll say uh, welcome to uh, Pixie. Me? Hi. Hi, everyone. How's it going? Andrew, hey, Andrew. how's it going? How are you? I'm good. I enjoyed. I enjoyed listening to the VDL commentary. Actually, that's. I'm not. I'm not a normal tuner in her. Probably should be, but I just always Probably. forget when they're on and. Probably I watch the bots so on YouTube. I always I'll put them on I'm doing work and I like listening and just seeing what happens and all the pretty little boards. You can't multitask as well. You can't multitask. I demand that you watch us and not do anything else. Okay, that's number one. So you know, Kevin well, O'Kelly, right here. You, you, you will be happy <laughs> to know that you'll be happy to know that Pixie is now a member of the I Have Eaten at Time Out in Chapel Hill Club. I'm Twice. disappointed I could not make it. I was so looking forward to it, and I lost out. But uh, I heard did it was great. The, time. Did we get the chicken and cheese biscuit? I'm trying to remember what you got, uh, Andrew. When we had, I kept it simple. Kept it simple. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, and I guess we're going to do some Nexus League games, Kevin. What are we doing? Yeah, let's uh, let David get a break. We'll get him back on for the uh, more. Uh, this one's going to be a fun one to watch. Uh, David gets to do the uh, more important one to get me off because uh, my commentary is not. Is good, so we'll save him for the big one. All right. Andrew, uh, tell us about what are the Nexus leagues? Okay, there's Nexus, there's Nexus, but tell us what the Nexus leagues are. And tell us how people can play in the fun game we're about to watch. I have no idea. Absolutely. Well, so in the first one of these fun games, they're going to have to work a bit of a ways because I believe Kevin said we'll be doing the 2022 finals game, which was the top seven. So that takes you a little bit to get there. But in general... The leagues, they're leagues. It's actually pretty straightforward. Um, I'm sure someone will drop the Discord link invite somewhere. Uh, and it's as simple as that. We, have, you know, we run signups. We start new press and gumbo games. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Clever. Start uh, new waves of press and gumbo games every two weeks. We handle all the GMing for you. You just have to show up and play, and you just have to respond when we say, hey, here's your game, and then you, off you go. Uh, I was trying to think of a clever little pitch beforehand, and I was like, "We, oh, was something I can't remember. It was something about like we don't we don't tolerate leavers, uh, loners." I couldn't figure out a third out, but basically, losers part of the <laughs> losers. I didn't want it. That's a little mean because you know most of these games, someone's going to get eliminated, right? And sometimes that's me. But right backstabber, people just like disappear, ruins the game, right? Backstabber, people just don't talk to you. You know, they don't go outside much. And that really is like, that's not what you're here for, right? And that's the whole point of the leagues, another L, is to just people that aren't like that. We're people that are friendly, interactive, going to play with you, going to talk to you, going to be your friend. They might stab you. That's okay. You can forgive them. You can come back for another one. Yeah. All right. Kevin, let's get to the game. Yeah, my problem is I forgot to put it on doing a thing here. So, um, well, the last is... So there's all kinds of leagues. So what we're going to talk about tonight is the press league. So this is the old-fashioned play-by-email, postal mail, right to your opponents. However you're going to do it, now it's all through. Uh, how, do, how do you communicate? Do we do it through how, um, Discord? Do you do it through um, the, the, the interface, the Backstabber interface? How do you guys communicate? Uh, we allow both Backstabber and Discord. Uh, just to be the most flexible for people. We use Backstabber as our main site. Um, and that's really because some people prefer to get the little notifications and other people prefer to get like, you know, emails. And we're just trying to be like, hey, whatever works for you. Yep. And so then on top of that, we've got two types of uh, gunboat. You've got a gunboat league where it is just 12 years for short games, 20 years for intermediate games and unlimited, which I think you guys have gotten to like 2004. Four or something on some games, which no, uh, no, no, that no. One. that's a Marcus it's still Zilstra. The same century, but yeah. it, yeah, I think, yeah, you're always waiting for the the next season to end and then get on to the next. The, Someone's you know dragging something out in 1935, and you're like, just take it, just take a draw. Just yeah. 
now. At least at that point, you're just clicking the box, hopefully, to get through. Um, and then lastly, and my favorite, is the speedboat. Five-minute turns. The games take, if you get the right players in, under 90 minutes. If you get people who are going the full five minutes uh, all 12 years, it takes up to two hours. But still, for a game of diplomacy to be done in under two hours, it's fantastic. It's quick. It's great for tactics and practicing. I've not played in quite some time because of other things. But uh, I do. If I come back, I do enjoy. Uh, I do enjoy. I know, Ed, you've, Ed, you've played the speedboat, right? Ed's great. Yes. Speedboat. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm good at I'm good at making the finals. I'm not good at winning the finals. I'm not Riaz. That's what I was gonna say. You you've got uh, Riaz uh, in that league, so it's tough to it's tough to win those. So um, so this so here's the tie. There was two games that I was considering, but we're gonna go with the this this is the current season game one ten, which you could see some of the names uh Ed, that we we've got that we've had on tonight's broadcast already it's, a, it's like a rebroadcast of what we just watched yep yeah that's actually i didn't i didn't know that, that they were going to be in the bdl that's pretty funny yep so but here's this uh so other so a lot of players uh have been around for some time long time uh who on here uh andrew is is someone we want to watch obviously you probably know the results so don't give that away but who who do we want to watch uh, on this board, other than the names, the, the four that have DBNI, who are the three that we we don't know yet? Oh, okay, skip all the DBNI because I was going to say not the droids. I, I've been fairly impressed by it with a couple of different plays. I ended up playing a game with um, and stabbing them on the in the Nexus tournament, the press tournament back in the in the winter. But um, I I like the the Germany actually. I've had a couple of solid conversations. Um, he's, he's funny enough from Germany, lives in Germany. Um, he's, he's got, he's got that, uh, that spark, you know, when you first find the game and it's just, it's all you can think about. Right. And then like, sometimes like it comes back and you get re-obsessed as far as I can tell, he was living in that beautiful moment. And it, I feel like <laughs> it really comes across in the play style. I mean, it, I, in like a, in like a positive way, like from what I've heard, the press is, it's good. Like it's, it's good. So. Excellent. All right. Well, then. All right. So you're you're uh, you're uh, not as a regular here. Uh, would you prefer to analyze, give comments? Ed, what do you want us to do? OK, I, I want to say Cedric has told me that he was subbed in. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, and that he did not make yes. this opening Austrian move. <laughs> uh, but how awesome is this opening Austrian move? Like this is like the most awesome move ever. Uh, and so, uh, it, that's hilarious. Uh, the unusual, not the, you don't see this German move too much, uh, anymore with Kiel going to Holland and, uh, you know, it's the old school Turkish opening, uh, that he's got to love in light of this Austrian opening, uh, and then poor Italy. Yeah. It's certainly it's a, a little bit player. of a surprise. I bet for this Italy. See these Austria. these remind me a lot of the old school, yeah, play by email type. Of, these, these are openings that I certainly have done again 15 20 years ago now, but um France to the France to the channel, uh something again we used to see a lot. So this this allows for and so this game I believe was an unlimited game. So you your openings yeah, are uh, different, right? Quick. Nope. Yeah, well 19 19- well, it might have been unlimited. I don't remember what the waves were. I guess it's important to note of the leagues is we do mix it up. Um, we mix up when the end date is. Sometimes it's 1915, which is really just like, hey, everybody, play a real game. Don't just quit early. Sometimes it's random secret between 1910 and 1920. And then we do run unlimited. So, yeah, this could have been unlimited. Sorry. No, that's okay. Just because the, the play style we see in VDL, uh, we see a typical set of openings because when you know your game can only go until 1912 at the latest – you're going to play a game that will maximize your score to 1912. Whereas in a longer game, you don't have to worry about pace and tempo as much, um, you know, from how you, how you start, how you start. And Christian and Christian Brown going North. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, I want to see where the alliances goes. Yeah. Ed, what are you laughing at? What are you laughing at? Well, I'm laughing at the three Austrian holds. 
Uh, I'm assuming the orders didn't uh, go in, and this is when Cedric subs in because uh, he told me uh, it, it, he didn't play 1901. But after that bold move not to even, uh, you know, go take Venice, Turkey's got to be happy. Russia, obviously very friendly. When the fleet from Kiel goes to Holland, it opens up Sweden, so they're excited. Uh, and then you see a lot of th- little things like this where France moves to the channel and then tried to sneak into London, didn't work, and now you're going to get a fleet boat in London, I'm sure. Yep. Yeah, I will say I am surprised. It might have been a literal like they saved their moves and then forgot because we're pretty good about catching, you know, no NMRs, no actual like somebody goes into the to the ether, that kind of a thing. But it's also possible that did happen here. So yeah, <laughs> no shout out to Cedric for subbing and we always we're looking for subs. I do. I agree. London is really cheeky, uh, especially given you're not going to have backup soon because your armies are all the way over there. But I'm interested to see if this FG like really matures. I don't really remember the beginning of this game. It's it's weird to, to do it this way. Now you have the armies in Iberia. It's slow moving, but we'll we'll see what happens here. They no build. What would you want to see from? Oh, okay, I was gonna say, what do you want to see from the the French and the German here if it's an FG? Exactly this. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. I think it's an FG, right? I mean, it looks like if I was England, I wouldn't want to see any, see any of this. I'm trying to think of, have we ever had discussions that, and David, well, when he comes back on, we'll, we'll certainly be able to provide perspective on it. But two fleets is, is Germany. How many times uh, in a three build do you get two fleets? I haven't seen it very much, and there's good reason for that, I think. Okay. Okay. All right, I'll I'll take the uh, spring while the fleet uh, the fleet and kill does go uh, west. Uh, probably not much uh, otherwise, but uh, what is that into North Sea? Oh, that's that's fun. Channel getting into North Sea so early, kind of like a delayed sea lion the opposite way. But uh, England and Liverpool still holds. Like they're waiting to see the Beatles or something, but. Um, it is interesting. Um, so Austria is back and playing now. Um, has help from Turkey. I was I was curious to see how how that would go. Christian, uh, who walked, I think it was uh, Galatia to Romania the first time. Uh, now back to Galatia and back into Budapest. So uh, Cedric taking his time getting started in the game. Well, I would just like to point out that he, he not only does he go to Serbia with Turkish support, but he's also convoying with Austrian help, the Italian into Albania. So he's really hedging, hedging his bets with all neighbors then. And Christian for and Christian for his uh, uh, strong start now has two German armies coming his way. <laughs> Thank and you for giving possibly, me possibly. Yeah, possibly not friendly with Turkey. Because, I mean, I don't know if he, maybe it was more like a defensive move, bouncing in Romania, but given there was a double fleet build, I'm kind of surprised that Turkey decided to do that. Yep. I mean, that would be why. (laughs) Cedric, hey, I'll convoy you to Albania. (laughs) Now I'll convoy you to Trieste. Instead, I think I'll go, I'll go to Venice. Uh, that was uh, nice. Yeah, well, I'm kind of surprised that Italy didn't just cover it. Or I don't even understand. I think the Albania move. Albania? That's like no issues, no problems. Like, that's reasonable, right? You're sitting on four, but the, the east appears to at least be a mess. There's opportunity for growth somewhere eventually. But uh, ow, ouch. Wow. But great play, great play from Cedric. Like this, this is when there's a time to lie. There's a time to lie, and this does appear like a great time to lie. I don't think it's an FG with North Sea cutting Denmark, so Germany can't get Sweden. Uh, but Germany still picks up, you know, Warsaw here and is going on the on the prowl. Right. I like I like this pace, Kevin. All right, let's hit it. Uh, uh... Okay, another army in the middle, another fleet in the bottom. 
and they pulled Albania, which makes sense. Okay. I'm trying to get back on side with Austria, I think. I this think is one, a great position for the Turkey. Yeah. The one item about press league is, is there's no, like when you're playing face to face or you're playing virtual, like we do through discord, you can see who's chat with each other. Yeah. You could be direct messaging on in the virtual, but in, in press, in true press, you have no idea who's, you know, in an alliance. So you might think you're, you're close and you keep your fleets as opposed to the, the other army. Cause you, you know, you don't know what Turkey's going to do coming out. You might think you're strong, but four fleets, yep. four fleets on the board for Turkey can't be positive for Italy. Yeah. Here no. we see Turkey no, get into Sevastopol. Christian Brown on the run in the north and Turkey trying to, uh, and will uh, very soon, trying to get into the Ionian now and can't, can't be there in the fall. It's a really great position for Turkey. Really bad. Uh, Christian Brown loses uh, Moscow now. What's happening, Andrew, with uh, France and Germany? I was I was actually going to say I think Russia actually managed to negotiate a decent little situation here with Baltic heading to Denmark. I think that's you know that's an astute move from both sides there for GNR, right? It's I think Christian Brown, right? Russia's looking at this and saying might be a game where I get three, and then I have to sort of figure out what my northern plays are. And Germany is going, I don't know if this guy's my friend anymore <laughs> with <laughs> France. You can see like, all right, well, you know, I'll take like the build from Moscow. It's, it's a decent deal. It helps prevent what looks like possibly an out of control Turkey, right? Because otherwise you're sort of like, well, if you don't take it, you have to guard it anyway. Are you going to self bounce because you're in Ukraine and Warsaw to defend the right? Just like, just take it. It's better for everybody. I think is the way I would sell it. Um, but yeah, it's, I gotta squint real hard to see this bit. Easy. Oh, okay, you got displaced out of Belgium. But what's Burgundy? England's Burgundy plans. Yeah. Everyone made a play, but yeah. there was a three on two. It looks like. Let's see if we can get there. Yeah, uh... but what's England's angle here? I think it's what I'm wondering about. Oh yeah, thank you for that. Because they're so they're back to IRI. They didn't walk around behind, which I mean, you could. One, you're talking about going to Middle Atlantic. I am sorry, because I'm trying to think about what would the downsides be, other than you know probably being a bad person. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, there's time. All right, what's going on in the fall? Yeah, I feel All like right. that's a turn late. <sighs> It's well, I, my eyes are drawn right to the east, where uh, last in the in the spring Cedric had gotten uh, Budapest, but now he's getting uh, Romania. I I have to think that Turkey's okay with this because Turkey's in Sev and Turkey's now in the Ionian, and Cedric's other army is going to Venice uh, with support from Adriatic. So it looks like we finally have an alliance structure in the east at the end of 03, and it's an AT. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Versus France? Like, France seems to be playing uh, on, <laughs> on his own, right? He took, took one from Germany, took one from, from England here. Is it going to be AT versus I mean, I could I could see, as France, I could see pitching something here where it's like, okay, Germany, here, get back, like, get take north, let's finish off England and go deal with what the South looks like, Right. And that's what that's kind of what the pitch is here at this point, where you're like, look, I know Belgium. That was kind of awkward. I'm just going to hold on to it for now, if you don't mind. Sort it out later, I promise. But wow, isn't that so scary? Don't you need to send some armies to go back up against, you know, everything that's about to show up at your front door in the east? Yeah. And the pull, the pull here, Ed, oh, man, like, I want to keep Mid-Atlantic, but... But pulling whales already off, and you're you're dead sooner rather than later. I don't know. Like it depends, right? Like sometimes you see selfless acts of, of immolation and extended deadline. But yeah. AT is going to have a lot of fleets coming west really quick. Yeah. Um, I'm, but you know it's hard to not be greedy if you're France. They pulled whales. They did the non greedy thing. Mm. We'll see if it works out. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what I 
then it's probably what I'd pull because you're bargaining against it's the whole if France really made that bargain with Germany, then you're just bargaining with Germany as England, right? You're just saying, Hey, please, you got other things to do. Yeah. It's like give me a chance. Just make it hard, right? If it's not easy, maybe something else will happen. I am I wondered I was trying to remember what the rebuild for Italy was. I'm I think I'm happy to see a fleet. I wouldn't have been surprised if it was, you know, an angsty army. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I mean, ultimately, it didn't matter, right? Because, you know, so. Yeah, negotiations, but yeah. Oh, missed opportunity for FG. Like, at that point, I mean, maybe that, and that goes back to my question of, is France playing alone? If, if France and Germany are, are synced up there, um, you know, co convoy to Wales, convoy to Yorkshire, you know, now... Now you're getting Russian fleets being, you know, a little more aggressive. So this is now, I think, important for me, Andrew, to talk about. This is a feature, uh, not a bug of extended deadline diplomacy. When you become so wrapped up in your own little drama that you don't really care about the game anymore because it's been weeks. Uh, <laughs> and th this is awesome. Like yeah, I'm gonna go to Portugal. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Irish. I'm gonna do all this other stuff. Meanwhile, we have a steamrolling AT right now, right? Which is you know crazy. Germany setting up to go against Russia. It's like we got our own game here. AT, you do what you need to do. The best part about yeah. this is Italy moving forward too. Like I'm gonna help. I think they are going to help, but you are you are right, Ed. That it's like while while DDL or other reviews or speedboat can be very much you know the TikTok the Zoomer esque timeline, uh, extended deadline can really stew just like it really is. You know, European kingdoms trying to sort out bloodlines and trade routes, and then just really, really, really hating each other. But by nineteen oh four, spring nineteen oh four, I would be surprised if there's that much vitriol by now. But I'm even more surprised that Brest didn't go to the Mid-Atlantic. I feel like you got to see what's in the cards for Italy here. Uh, I think the rebuild of a fleet kind of tells you that as well. There's like one thing is going to happen here, one thing only. And it's not Italy sticking around to defend themselves. <laughs> um, so, I mean, on the other hand, maybe that's, that's the goal. But bouncing Piedmont, I mean, bouncing Piedmont, I think, happens regardless. But maybe you're like, hey, Italy, you take up roost here in Iberia. I can't get there anyway. You're sort of trading two builds with Liverpool, but you're not getting Eddie, it looks like. It's weird. And then all the holding in the middle. I, I don't yeah. think England can die faster than what France needs to do to hold the line. So, uh, you know, but we'll see. Let's go. Kevin, what do we got? Well, we try. Now England's helping... Uh, Italy into Spain, uh, come across. Uh, I hate these people over here. Uh, oh, thank you, Germany, for going to attack Russia. Austria is Galicia and Ukraine. Uh, and the Turks cut Moscow, helping Russia here. Um, oh, it's a fantastic AT with a little I now, uh, now there. France, it's sort of a Pyrrhic victory. Uh, loses Portugal, uh, gets Liverpool, apparently oblivious to the threat, now convoying uh, into London. They can't force, uh, they can't force <laughs> Eddie, though. They can't force Eddie because they don't have any way. They have to ask the German to help them, and the German is very clearly <laughs> wanting to do other things, which I also don't quite – there must have been a reason, I'm sure. But it's just There's like those are the reason. armies – the Austrian armies, that's what we were talking about. We said they were going to show up. They're even they're a turn late again as a courtesy. And yet, uh, ow. <laughs> I think it ends in a two-way. <laughs> or no, keep Italy around. I'm sorry. They're being nice. Uh, Italy can wind up in, you know, St. Petersburg or something. All right. Let's, uh, what does Italy disband Tuscany, of course? All right. That's no way. <laughs> Belgium. Is the disband? I might have done liver. I might have done London. I mean, I guess it's Jason saying, "I'm going after you, Cody." All right, what do we got? 
in the fall. Well, there's some black arrows. Now we're moving. Except okay. for I kind of, uh, yeah, I guess you want to eliminate Russia. I guess, I mean, maybe, maybe I'm looking at this wrong. Maybe FG was like, we were already too late to stop Austria and Turkey from probably topping this board, sharing a top, however they want to run it. Let's just clean up our half and be the two minor powers and then try to force a four way. Maybe that's what's getting negotiated. From a scoring system perspective in the in the leagues, what uh, what's the benefit of a two way, three way, four way, you know, solo? Does a solo blow everything out of the water? What what are you playing for? Solo, solo, as always, as it should. I think is at least twice what the maximum possible score is. But the scoring system actually, we uh, we revamped it for 2023. We had actually a couple of weeks of discussion with the community. Uh, a lot of talking in Discord about like what do we want to prioritize, and we moved to something that's a little bit more draw based, uh, but it does reward the board top, but not shared tops. Yes. And that is an important note here, and I think that might happen, might get important later or in other league games that maybe we review on DBN further down the line. Uh, this year, it's, it's you got to be number one. If you're not number one, you don't get the, like the little special bonus points. Good. And so David, David Hood, uh, rewarding draw based, uh, will be certainly smiling in the background and he is absolutely smiling at all five of those, uh, Turkish units, not a perfect Congo line, but, uh, pretty darn close, uh, with all that advancement. Pretty close and pretty friendly to Austria. Yeah. Um, so, all right. In the fall, those two, I mean, those two with Cedric stopping in, um, what the heck? Smyrna goes where? <laughs> Sabi- Smyrna Sabi is, Sabi is happy with this. I love that you is go on a European completely vacation. beautiful. It's, uh, it's a lovely time of year. The fall. Right? Gaskini yeah. in Moscow. Austria, meanwhile, is in Warsaw. Christians fighting Germany. Christian, yeah, doing a great job, by the way. It's, I like to give, I love being a small power because I don't have to think that hard. So I always want to give shout outs when they do well because it shows they're still thinking. Uh, and still on three, right? One it's might think that instead over. of, one might think that instead of having three units in England and trying to attack England, you know, you would, <laughs> you would do other things. But nevertheless, goodbye, Edinburgh. And um, it's going to be too late for you with the army in Gascony. By the way, that army is needed there, uh, and so this is a uh, this is going to be great for AT with Italian and English uh, help coming on board. So this is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Italy around the bend, still on two. Let's see the sure. builds. Germany's polls, I can't wait to. I'm not even going to guess because I'm going to be wrong, but I can't wait. Ed, guess. Let's see. Let's hear Ed guess. You should get rid of the fleets. That's what I was going to say, which means we're not. No, so, yeah, we got one. <laughs> he split the bait. 50 50. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you know, someone you've been attacking all game, and now you're like, well, actually, if I leave Denmark undefended, you won't walk in. I could see, you know, but you could always walk, heal up, bounce it. But then again, I don't know. Like, why doesn't Russia just eat you from behind here? Like, I think we're getting to the point where we start to go, is there a stab here for AT? And is there a soul threat? Right. I think we're starting to discuss that. Oh yeah. Turkey and what Turkey and Western Med and North North Africa right now is just, I mean, dream positions. And now even further because <laughs> <laughs> to add, you're you're right. You're gonna get uh, Italy and uh, St. Pete North Coast. Yeah, I mean this is sort of insane here, but Italy's helping uh, Austria into uh, Marseille because Marseille decides it, it needs to go after and piff Gascony. Um, so <laughs> and, uh, Tur- now Turkey's in uh, Mid Atlantic. Congo line is up. You know, pretty exposed to Cedric, if I'm looking at this correctly. Uh, uh, you know, Cedric's got a better stab, I think, on Turkey than vice versa. Uh, but, uh, but Ukraine left. Yeah. 
it's like a surprise. It's it's surprisingly well demilitarized. I gotta say. Yeah. I will tell you that Cedric's diplomacy dream is 17, 17, 18. He's told me that before, so I'm curious if we see that here. But, you know. Okay. I don't think they're going to work together. Me. Oh, there you go. Oh, Whoa, Italy. Italy. I, was Italy turn. Turn. Italy turn. I was like, Irish. Irish is the moment. Put Turkey into Irish. Make it absolutely absurd. This is This is the dream. Yeah. But here we are. This is an excellent turn for France, uh, diplomatically and tactically, too. He got rid of the Turkish army last time, blowing up an Austrian army, and then getting rid of the Turkish fleet on the other side now. You still have Italy on the other, you know, past you, but but this is big. Yeah, but Austria's in Munich. What is it? But do you want Munich compared to Marseille? Uh, No, I'd rather be in Marseille, but it's not a total catastrophe is my point. Absolutely. Yeah, well, maybe you move to Rolia instead, but um, these are nitpicks that don't matter. Congrats on being on Munich, Austria, Cedric. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 not often. Not an AT. Oh, wow. where are those armies going? I think they're going to convoy. Mm-hmm. Right. If right. History is a, if now. history is a guide. Well, I mean, the convoy to convoy to Naples. Because you know Italy, Italy turned so it, it, Naples has got to go now. Mm. Where's the other one go? Naples has got to go. <laughs> they, Naples off the island. Oh, they did convoy, but to oh look at that, yeah. we have a little tension now. There you go. Ukraine, Romania, mm. Serbia with a Bulgaria, Greece, and a critical Adriatic gets into the Ionian situation here. So I don't think Turkey can do much with this stab. If it, I mean, I don't think. I mean, I think this is better for Austria than Turkey at a quick glance. Oh, but then absolutely. Turkey's going to Lyon. So it's you, kind of a weird. Yeah, deal. I think you consider this a stab, then, right, Ed? This looks like a stab from Austria. It looks like it looks like they're both attacking each other. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, Austria made such good progress to get to Munich in Munich, and now pulls everything back. Yeah. It looks it looks like something where they agreed. Oh, let's occupy the Balkans for mutual safety, and then it just so happened that Ukraine also got occupied. Oh, <laughs> Hello, Liverpool! I just helped. I just helped you destroy Turkish fleets. Now I will take Liverpool because I'm going to lose. <laughs> I got, I'm going to lose Naples. I'm going to lose Naples, though. Therefore, ah, oh, boo! And, no, oh, and he oh, just, oh, he disbanded. Well, he had disbanded anyway. So. And he's he's gone. That's Thank you. yeah. Yeah, because Ionian goes green. to Naples. Uh, look at that unimpeded, because Naples leaves. So England now got Turkish help into Spain. So I it, this I looks like they got it together a bit here. I think that was. I think they they reached some accommodation. Andrew, this if does you're... look like cleaning up for a draw. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, if you're England, though, why do you why do you accept that offer? You can't build. Do you get points for centers, or, or? Uh, it's a point per center, but small two potatoes. versus one is literally one more point. Yeah. Um, and it's a lot less security, given that you know for sure Italy is also looking to survive because yeah. making the draw, I think it's like five points, right? So or whatever, making the draw is good. I feel like. Forget scoring systems. Mm. Making the draw is better than not making the draw. And if I'm in Portugal and the other person that desperately needs to make the draw is my neighbor, I feel yep. pretty good. I feel not yep. not too shabby. Uh, I was going to point out, I think, he, I think Stitches has a good point here in the chat, right? This mm. all may be subterfuge where Austria made these moves in order to maybe uh, – uh, they, they saw the stalemate line and maybe help break it. Uh, if we see FG fight here – uh, we, you know, I think we could see him pounce again. We'll see what happens. Yep. All right, let's see it. Uh, yeah, England didn't build, had to wave one star. Wow, and Germany goes right back on the attack. This is see, there you go. All right, North Africa's down there. I always forget. Yeah, yeah, that I don't like the Italian. Uh, name and placement of this but i mean it's well, a great name it's just you know. yep. <laughs> got to shrink but, yeah. the pond. 
but this is the risk, right? This is what France should have seen. Um, and this is like, so credit to stitches, it's credit, mm -hmm. credit to Ed, giving credit to stitches, giving credit <laughs> to the diplomacy here to be clear. Yeah. Ugh. All right. Let's hit the fall. That's a pretty, yeah. Yeah. Um, now to, yeah. That's a, it failed though. Right, Kevin? Yep. Does not make yeah. The sense. red, the red arrow, red arrow means failed attack. But what is not, what is not failed though is Rum to Sev and Livonia to Moscow, yeah. and Ionian and Greece. to Greece. Yeah, those are good moves. Wow. <laughs> and with Germany moving all the way back, it's always yeah. such as Austria to not have enough room for your builds. Minus Oof. one, so it's got to be. I mean, what do you? I mean, let's pause here. Your Turkey. What are you thinking? What are you doing? I uh, disband Spain. Uh, that's that's like that's the last straw for you. This is maybe Albania. I can't step. hold Albania. It's gonna get piffed. Well, piffed. It, oh yeah, now with the build, yeah. After here, so the builds. Yeah, North Africa. Oh right, again. That's a lot to cover, though. Greece would have to stay. Greece has to stay placed, though, right? So, Rome and Naples both should fall. No, no. There you go. I so mean, it doesn't get nothing. Nothing to the east of the center line is going to survive. Yeah. And I think it's more a question of turkey years. How do you make the draw? Right. You said it was unlimited. It's probably right. So, that means stalemate line. You're talking stalemate line. Then we're looking at Germany to hold. Which Denmark needs to come down, I think. Technically, this turn could because it could have been at I risk. But... Christian Brown's in this game. These are fantastic moves from Christian. Uh, I mean, he must have had a lot of fun playing. <laughs> and waiting like two days every every single time. <laughs> just enter more holds. Yeah. Yep. That's the one where you're waiting for your GM to ping you right at the deadline, saying, "Please hit submit." Uh, that's me. <laughs> you know, I think it's a little strange here. Cedric could have. Cedric, he, he does these moves like something weird is going on, right? Because I don't think he could have not thought Western wouldn't go to Tunis. Instead, he could have tapped, you know, Greece, Greece or he could have taken Greece and tapped Bulgaria. Something's bizarre is happening, but he takes Ankara. So... I'm not. I'm not excellent on the stalemate lines or a solo uh, um, analysis as Austria. Like Tunis is Tunis is a big, uh, a big yeah. center, right? It's a big center. Yeah, but it's all it's all seventeen on that side. So I have to assume that the the turkey here, the fin is just going. I'm in the draw. It's we know it's seventeen. We can all see what the board is. I'm sorry that it's this way, but this is the way it is. Please keep me alive in Spain, or, or else. But I don't know what. Yeah, I say or else. I don't know what his. I don't know what he's got for an or else here. I well, Turkey know. holds a lot of leverage, I, I think, uh, on the Western powers. Yeah, no spoiler stitches, but that's that's what um, that's roughly what I'm seeing. It's like it's like I'm part of the draw, or yeah, see what it is. Well, AT okay. is I was going to say AT is technically over the line, right? And there, there's potential for a deal. Now Piedmont gets to oh. Spain. Ooh. Oh, with, with yeah. A convoy because it gave up to us. This is like we are now over the line. If you're thinking AT's right, I mean, this is bad. If the you know oh, if God. they've you know what a Credit deal. To my German player Cedric. did the stalemate in the middle though, at least. <laughs> But, yeah. Uh -oh. Well, it's weird, bro. And, yeah, I mean, there, there's a whole. And, a, and again, look, one, two, three, all moving, too. Like, you got to know that's going to work in order yeah, to get Yeah, there. yeah, that's I a, mean, That's complete trickery. That's trickeration. Yeah. And after all that switching, look, we had three yellow go red. Oh, no, Greece got walked out. They, okay. Yeah, they reached a deal in Turkey. Yeah. Uh, a Turinian took Rome. Yeah, I mean, this so, is probably a pretty good deal for Turkey. If if 
I mean, it's just giving a potential solo to Cedric. So, you know, there's the question is whether or not that will happen. Well, he's, he's supporting Spain. Well, I mean, that you're supporting it now, but turn, turn once and it's gone. Mm. Meanwhile, look at that con Congo One, line. Two, three. Ukraine should have gone to Warsaw just to continue it. But yeah. Mm. I agree. Yeah, I agree. You can't get all those Turkish centers down there if you do that, though. <clears throat> France is still holding, right? They're not, oh. nothing, no change. I don't know what you can, well, I mean, what do you try? You don't have your stress in Marseille. You have, oh, you have, if England supports you, England can support no, 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 no. Spain. Look, look at this. Or, this is like Turkey. I mean, Turkey is giving Austria close to 18, right? Khan, Ball, Greece holds, Tunis at 16, 17, Rome. I think Austria is at 17. 18, so Plus one. Yeah. That was it. There was some argument there. I was there. trying to think, like, what's, what's – France should be doing something here, right? If we want to go back a couple turns, there's got to oh, yeah. be – I mean, like, the hold this, – this feels like – this is speedboat. Right, Ed, actually, this is where you're just you're always thinking about, oh, what what do I expect the other person to do? They're afraid. They're scared. Right. And the thing about speedboat, right, is like you can't you got to be on the offensive. Right. If you don't smell blood in the water and you're not like the shark going after someone else, then you're going to end up being the catch. And that's kind of what this feels like here in the West is, you know, you hold for one, two, three. I mean, yeah, what you're describing is right. Like the the Western chaos was played like speedboat, but I don't really understand Turkey's motivations here. Yeah, it's, it's a throw. I mean, spirit of the Armenia, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a throw. It's for whatever throw. reason. Yeah, David. Let's see if we get uh, David. David enjoyed a lot of those uh, Congo lines. I enjoyed them, but they shouldn't have happened. There was way too much stasis from Germany and France. You can't just lock up like that. You ought to keep playing. I mean, we don't know what the Turkish motivation was, but also throws are part of the game. Yep. All right. So let's see. And the psychology I'm... behind them and making and taking advantage of them and everything else are part of the game. Yeah. So we went from, we were talking about scoring system. Cedric was at 56 before all the way to 100. So you're, yeah, you're, you're getting a 75, 80% bonus uh, on top of your best score. That's, that's a nice, that's a nice result. Excellent play, uh, excellent uh, play from Cedric. And Cedric, like, we go back, uh, didn't build in 1901. I know it wasn't it wasn't him, but Austria did not build in 1901. Okay, I mean, did David, did you see the spring 1901 Austrian Open? I did, I did. Okay, it's a pretty cool result. Well, first of all, it's always a cool result when anybody solos. Secondly, it's a cool result when Austria solos in a situation like this where they had what one fleet or something. <laughs> But thirdly, it's even cooler, cooler when you're coming back from a situation that he was in in 1901, which just goes to show you, don't give up. Yep. Don't give That's up right. in this game. You can come back from all sorts of things if you keep hopping and keep playing. He was active. His units were obviously congoing everywhere when a lot of people's units were basically sticking around. Action is the name of the game, says me. So that was the warm up. That was a fun one because anytime we get a solo, we definitely want to show some solos. Um, is there a lot of in, in the leagues, in press league, since we're, we'll stick with press league tonight? Um, more solos in press league uh, than you know, higher proportion than normal? Is it, uh, or, are they, or are they a rare occasion, a special, special game like this? Uh, depends what you call normal. There's less solos than there is in Gumbo. I'll say that. <laughs> sure. yeah. um, I don't remember. I, I did bring up the statistics last year because, you know, of course, every you know, year ended, everybody's like, God, it felt like there were so many solos and it was like one out of five, which feels high. That's I mean, a lot. I mean, that's pretty high. <laughs> uh, feels high. Feels pretty high. No, it is pretty high. Um, but I, I, I wonder if, like, y'all who've been playing longer time online do you have a sense for if there's a difference between online versus face-to-face -face, extended versus uh vdl solo rates like do people because i would expect let me let me finish my thought i would expect that when you're mad in the moment the throw it just you just do you do it you might regret it later while well, is this you're more like 
it's like you're stewing for so long. Maybe you can like work things out with people. That's what I always thought. But I think that you end up in face to face, you end up with relationship type things that go on game after game that actually reduce the chance of somebody throwing. The throwing usually happens from people that don't know each other very well, haven't haven't uh, got to know each other very well, which is more likely to happen in online space than in a face to face space. I think that or, even virtual, to think or even a virtual face to face space where you're talking to people and establishing more human connection. <clears throat> usually, throwing is as a result of not having enough connection to the people from a human point of view on the other side of the board, you just look at them as someone who didn't do what you wanted, as opposed to the person that you talked to for five minutes about how your life was going. Uh, from a tournament standpoint, I'm trying to think back to some, you know, the larger tournaments, um, 2016 worlds here in Chicago, 2018 in, in DC. I, I mean, there's, I think we get 10 boards around. So 40 for qualifying and there's, you know, four or five, you know, solos if we're lucky. So yeah, yeah, one and that's, that's still in today's in today's hobby. That's that's a high percentage. Yeah, in, and in I have to go back to six years. When I ran the World Dipcon, we I think we had two solos, and we had you know a hundred players or something like that. <clears throat> and I, I just think it solos are actually not all that common in in today's hobby. Not nearly as much as they used to, frankly, because people are better players than we back in the day. They've played more games. And I think in general have a little more uh, control over, you know, uh, over their, their reactions. But I do think, and I, I will continue to say this, I think it can happen more often in situations where players do not know each other as well. Yeah. Well, absolutely. That makes sense. Also probably it being a league. Um, I know when you go to a tournament, you know, you might be that, you might become the person that threw the solo that then this other person won and you're all sitting there on Sunday being like, you know, it was over last night. What you gonna do? That kind of a thing. Where it's in a league, it's like you can throw a solo because maybe you're mad or this or that, but it's not like the end of the world. There's always another game next week, next other week. You're always probably you're playing another game maybe already, and that one's going better, so you already feel a little bit better. That kind of a thing. I wonder if that affects it as well. It might, yeah. Uh, all right, Ed. What do you want? You want to stick around? You want you want to take a break? It looks like a hell of a game, but uh, I need another beer, so I'll take a break. All right. See ya. So this this is a big one. This is a big one. This one uh, this one certainly won't be any throwing of, of solos because it's a top, I'm assuming, top board style. So once you got the win, you're going to take the win? Yeah. So we officially we called it the all-star game, <laughs> um, but it was the top seven placers uh, from the 2022 league. Um Started a little bit late because everybody was enjoying their holidays over the winter. Not that I'm bitter as the GM, um, but once it got rolling, it got going, and it was it was quite the banger, I can say. You know, this really is an all star game. I mean, Matthew Tatanchi, Ronnie Orvanoff, who have had a lot of good success. I don't know that they've won tournaments or leagues. All five of these other people have. This is this is this is quite a lineup. Yeah. Um, from a uh, power selection, uh, random uh, Paris method. Paris method. Paris method. Right. Please, please. There's, there's are you order saying, jo- are you saying Josh took Germany as his first choice? Well done. I am. I that am. is that is something. I did that one time at a game, but that's because I randomly pulled the units out of a box when I was supposed to be making a choice. But I, I don't know that you see very many people choose Germany first. Otherwise, yeah. you get a break for that. You... I, should, should, I did not. Since I'm the person that decides who gets a break, no. no. Well, let's see. So, and that's the other thing too: is the place on the right hand side might have been regular season place, and doesn't mean where they picked in in what order. Oh. So we'll... Okay, all right. Well, that that makes oh, more shoot. sense. Yeah, yeah. They may have dropped down in the Paris method to get the tiebreaker or something. Yeah, yeah. Right that. that might have had because I know Brandon, Brandon Fogel, not 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 DBN's favorite Brandon, Brandon Dix, but Brandon Fogel. Uh, likes to drop down um, to, to move it. So, all right. So now we see him. We know all these names. We won't even do the introduction on them. Uh, David, let's uh, let's get you to do the uh, analysis and uh, Andrew do the uh, what what uh, David missed up front here. Sounds good. 
We have that French uh, opening that we've already talked about tonight, sort of the very defensive opening of going to Burgundy to make sure that you go there. And again, we've got that English full Churchill opening, putting the army in Edinburgh, something that we don't see as much as we used to in the old days. In the East, do we have anything of note? Not really. These are all the most standard Italian, uh, I'm sorry, standard openings from everybody, except you could argue that the Italian opening, while normal, is not the standard opening, at least not in today's meta. But all the other ones are, frankly, the most common uh, opening in virtual play these days. I'd say I think a lot of our our style and let's see VDL uh, comes from a lot of these players. A lot of the, uh, the better players, higher ranked players, play uh, in Nexus leagues. Uh, have have like the what is it the uh, the Armenian fist bump? I know is uh, from Speedboat. I think so. Th- th- there are things that we've picked up uh, that have started here. So I think the seeing the two mesh together. Well, uh, all seven of these players, I know this is Nexus Presley, but all seven of these players have significant experience in the virtual hobby in the last three years and so would have been affected and, frankly, are affecting the meta. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, Andrew, let's see uh, Let's see what you got on. Oh, I like this. Tell us what you tell Immediately us what you I see. I see Syria heading down there and giving a lot of space, and I see Austria maybe being the first victim. Um, especially, well, with nothing in Galicia, there's maybe an opportunity to find an ally in Russia here for Evan, but ow. That's, I think, what I would say. Ow. This is the second time we've seen this Italian fall 1901. It would have been a third time if if uh, Cedric had been able to convoy order a convoy correctly in that other game. But, but that meant, wow, this is really quite an IT night that we're seeing here. And we could ask what Cedric knows about this game, but I think he just soloed. He so. just soloed, so that, that explains it. Um, <laughs> in, in the West, uh, again, we're seeing the English Army going to Belgium to live or die. We shall see. Uh, but otherwise, nothing particularly uh, impressive to write home about. You know, Germany's got choices to make in this situation, as we all know. Do you support yourself to Holland to make sure the English don't bounce you there? Do you send somebody to Munich to make sure the French don't try to snake it? He chooses to do what to do here and let and let the Russians get into Sweden, which, as we know, is an important choice to make when you're Germany and you don't know exactly what's happening. I like it. And yeah. no, no bounce in Sweden. Right. So two builds for Russia, which is. Uh, <sighs> no, um, no northern pressure, uh, Andrew. Do, it, 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 is this a position where. In a, in a top board, you want to make yourself known. I feel like, David, we, we saw in DBNI a lot of northern Russian fleets. Um, is, that a, is that a style we see in maybe some of the Nexus leagues or amongst these players that you might see a lot? I know Matt likes them. I think because I think he likes them in Gumbo, too. I think he knows that I do. So hmm. I, I think I remember us having a nice little conversation once about the, the benefits of a, maybe something... Of course, I kind of prefer them on the southern coast. Uh, it's what oh, I've been coming around to in Gumbo recently. Um, but that's sort of another story for another time here. I kind of want to see an EG almost. That's just, I kind of just, I like the way it could be set up. What did Andrew Gribikoff do to you, man? <laughs> why do you want to see? Why do you want to see? We didn't did manage you? to share what a board at Cascadia, actually. But I didn't share one with Riaz either. So... <laughs> Well, there you go. Maybe I'm just rooting for GR now. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Russia, big Russia. Who doesn't like Russia? I, that's, that was going to be my follow-up question. Is am I expecting to see Fleet Liverpool? And sadly, I'm not. So, uh, happily, that's though, we are seeing a German. The Germans actually build a fleet. Happily, we're also seeing the English build an army, which can often be the right the right move in this situation. Um, the fleet from Turkey is an interesting choice. If you have just made it look like you're in IT, and I talked about this an hour ago on this show, you think you've got an IT, do you really build the second fleet here? Uh, is that really consistent with having put the Italians in Greece? It is maybe if you're just is. trying to support yourself to Black Sea. I think you got to take Black Sea. And I also, um, we can talk about this game was 1915 end date, so it'll stop there if it gets there. So it is a little bit longer than that 1912. And I think if you just watched, well, sorry, you just collaborated with someone 
in immediately taking out a player. You know, Evan's not dead, but there's a lot of blood on the floor. I would be worried that the same person would be willing to do it again. But, you know, that's just me. I like the army in Marseille, too, as opposed to Paris. I, I would I want to talk about that at some point in the future, but not today. Today we'll get to uh, spring 1902. David, what do we... Today we are not seeing an IT Kraken. We are seeing an AT AstroTurk because that fleet was not to take Black Sea. It was to support the fact that you were going to take Greece from the United States. So a little bit of a pivot here. You know, Evan is an outstanding diplomat, as we all know from past experience. So I'm sure he had a role in that. Matthew getting into Galicia here is probably not what Evan Swihart was hoping to see. Um, looking at the West, uh, what do we have going on in the West? We've got an attempted move into Holland with support from Riaz, which does not work. Riaz and Matthew working together, though, into Skagrak. I guess the question is going to be, who does Andre throw in with? He does go to Ruhr, which makes it look like he's throwing in with Riaz. Yeah, Josh. Yeah. I mean, Josh I like his move to Spain. Yeah, yeah we'll go ahead. Go ahead. All right, so I like the move to Spain, mostly because it's the classic, like, one of the one of the things I was most wowed by at Cascadia in my first tournament was Chris Brand doing nothing as France for, like, five years and then topping the board. And I think the Spain move is an excellent excellent line in line with that kind of a strategy because you know italy built in rome you're just protecting yourself right you just you have to make sure just in case you know you believe them yeah but hedge see what happens at the north see somebody's lying making a move right Ruhr did not have support yeah belgium was doing the other thing um but then you also you know maybe he got a hint about this this falling out of the it yeah, if I'm England, I'm seeing that move. I feel like, David, we see a lot of Portugal back to Mid-Atlantic in, in more of the games that we cover. Um, I should look back at the face-to-face -face tournaments just to see if the meta is the same way. But seeing this, uh, the um, uh, Leviathan feels feels right to me. And Riyadh has no, you know, he, he, the comfort is here. Now let's see how aggressive he is. Uh, yeah, and if, you, and if you've got a Leviathan where Russia's helping England into Skagrak, that's quite a Leviathan you got going on. Yeah. And then yeah. helping them actually into <laughs> Denmark itself. Yeah. Wow. But I'm actually, my eyes are drawn to the east where the Russians have slipped into Vienna as the Austrians have taken Trieste. So I think that's an interesting situation to be in. Um Italians did not have a good year, Brad. Bradley did not have a good year. I mean, obviously it takes Tunis, but did not have a good year otherwise. The he takes Serbia, uh, though. Oh, he did take Serbia. That's he true. But I still don't support. So, so maybe there is. Maybe the, I, I missed that. So maybe there is hope for Bradley here. A little bit of winter green action. The bounce in North Atlantic, I'm assuming, is arranged. You guys agree? Yeah, that feels arranged. I mean, the, the trust with Russia to not, like, just walk into Norway. Good diplomacy, I assume, right? Yeah. Um, Livonia is kind of an interesting choice here. I'm not, am I missing what that's supposed to be mm -hmm. for? Um, if he's if Matthew's going to continue to work with Riaz, Matthew wants to get in on the action. And that means putting an army eventually into Berlin or something. So I assume that's what that's all about because he feels like he's got his, you know, he's going to be building in Warsaw. So yeah. then he's going to have ah. two armies to move. So I think that's what he's doing, but we shall see. Yeah. And nothing for Germany to con convoy back around um, if necessary. That's interesting. That implies pretty heavy communication and coordination, though, between Italy, Turkey, and Russia to move to Livonia under the assumption you're going to get a build because you literally walked into Vienna, right? Mm -hmm. So yep. that's got to be. I'm not. I know. I spent all last turn saying Evan is, you know, probably dead. Evan is. Evan's looking really dead. And <laughs> if that's the case, well, even if you don't get the build in Warsaw, you're still moving towards the German front by going to the to Livonia. Yeah, I just I would be worried about Baltic. Yeah, because we're wandering. Um, yeah. Turkey's building one, Italy's building one, Russia's building one, Austria is only losing one. So there, uh, Tunis was neutral, and I don't remember the other neutral. 
You gotta let my cat out of the room. All right, I'll let you guys chat about the builds. Anything interesting? Hey, look at your northern fleet you guys were talking about from from the Russians. I had a feeling. Can't help that, either. Can although I, I in guess. this case, you wonder if the southern fleet is actually. I mean, he, he thought he was with England. Now he's he's not going to be with England building the northern fleet. So the southern fleet would have been the thing to do if you're going in the German campaign. This does feel like sort of um, a calculated risk of like, oh, maybe there was like some England's twisting my arm. You know, Riyadh, he's so convincing. I just have to help him this year. And then now it's like, well, I can't stand to see Army Liverpool. I don't know. I can't figure out that half of it. But maybe there was an attempt to sort of get in a, a better position so that he ends up with Norway and Sweden. And then maybe just Germany back into Denmark. Maybe that's what the play was here with the fleet and the fleet saying, hey, I actually am going to like, I'm going to do it this time, like for real, you know, but I don't know. Backstabber is a little, little finicky on where you click in St. Petersburg. I'm not saying it's an accident, but it is not out of the question. Probably low probability though. Um, fleet con is interesting. That was the... Yeah, because, I mean, at, at that point, well, I mean, if you're Turkey here, you're kind of squeezed. I got to, if Austria is dead, I, I got to make up my mind where I'm going next, right, David? He's got to, he's got to, where do you go? If you're Turkey in this in this board position, which way, which well, way? Well, there, there was an argument that you want to put pump another army into the Balkans, but it all depends on your alliance structures, you know, the potential alliance you might have. If it really is just a win a green, then the fleet is almost a defensive move to try to block Eastern Med or take Black or something. Um, block Eastern Med in a GN is what I mean. Yeah. Um, but if if you really thought you could make a deal with one of them, you might want to build an army. Uh, you know, take Serbia if you're going to work with the Russians, for example, and move the army into Bulgaria. So it's I just think it's an interesting choice to build the fleet. Yeah. I agree. You make a good point. There's nothing. There's nothing appetizing about that if I'm looking to ally with Turkey. It's very mm -hmm. much like a, oh, yeah, spiny. Hmm. Not forcing Black Sea. Yeah, this is this is pretty wintergreeny. Although, did Romania and Serbia move to Bulgaria? I guess maybe they were trying to cut support for something. I can't yeah, tell. Yeah. I think they oh, both they moved did. to Bulgaria. Yeah. So they were both worried about who Turkey was going to pick. Is that what you possibly? Sure yeah, possibly, possibly. I mean, actually, Serbia to Bulgaria. I'm not totally sure what that was for, but I understood Romania to Bulgaria. That was to you know maybe help keep Serbia alive if the Turks were going to try to attack with two. Oh, so it was so um, Bulgaria supported Budapest to Romania, so Serbia cut that. Ah, that's it. That's exactly what it was. So that that makes a heck of a lot of sense. Actually. Yeah, that's a, that's actually good tactics right there. On the on the part of the on the on the part of the Wintergreen partners. Let's look at the West though. Mid Atlantic to Irish yeah. after the English build the army in Liverpool. I assume the big uh, army Liverpool bill was like Andre. You're not coming. See, I got an army. I got two armies now on the continent. So you're not coming. And then he goes to Irish Sea anyway, which I think is fun. Which uh, is one. And to, well, he takes Belgium. Uh, with the Germans, so yeah, that's Belgium awesome. with the Holland, which makes sense because you're like, screw you, you just helped France against me. So yeah, well, English armies do go to die somewhere. It's uh, I will. Th this position does not look too. Uh, we also lost Den Riaz. Also lost Denmark to the to Josh. Now yeah. Riaz had to, Riaz had to react to the fact that there was a northern fleet from <laughs> Russia. I mean, he had to adapt to that or react to that. But it certainly looks like Riaz, un, un, uh, unusually, is without friends right now. All right. Does uh, does Matthew live to see the end of the year, David? Are you talking Evan about Evan Uh I've already forgotten Evan. Oh yeah, sorry. I'm looking at Matthew taking. <laughs> Evan, the Evan is such a non-entity. He's all yeah. he's been replaced by Matthew Tutanji, and that is exactly I think what is going to happen at the end of this calendar year. And and he's destroyed. Bye bye, Evan Swihart. <clears throat> bye bye, Greece. Hello, English um, Channel. 
bye bye English guy that went to Belgium to die, then went to Holland to die, then died. So bye bye him, bye bye North Sea. Bounce in Munich arranged, I feel like. Oh, yeah, I would agree with that. Although Irish to English, that makes sense. But Yorkshire holding is quite a thing to do, isn't it? That is quite a thing to do instead of going to Liverpool. I'm not even sure why you do that. I think it's foreseeing losing North Sea. That's what it's got to be, right? You no, know, it's a fall turn, though. you got to make sure you don't lose Liverpool. It's in a fall turn. I, that, that makes me wonder if Riaz knew that Irish was leaving. It's yeah. almost, almost, almost the only thing that makes any sense to me. He, he says, to, he says he to Andre. What's that? Sorry. You said he needed a friend. Yeah. Right? He was looking like he was without friends, and this would yeah. look like maybe there's rekindling. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. yeah. Riaz says to him, you took Belgium from me. You got, you know, you got one. Let's work together. Andre is a very, very, very good ally. Although again, I'm, I'm all of that's perfectly fine, and you can still order Yorkshire to Liverpool. It's not like yeah. Yorkshire to Liverpool is a dangerous move for anybody. So I just find it interesting that he didn't even try to cover Liverpool. I don't know, but it has to cover. I think it's. It feels like it's for tactical reasons. Yeah. I think I, in, in Rios's case, I'm positive it is for tactical reasons, and he is about three steps above me in tactical ability, so I'm positive that's what it is. But I, I just think it's quite a thing to not cover Liverpool in the fall yeah. turn there. I just think that's quite yeah. a thing. It He's does still feel losing like a unit. So. All right. Well, Evan, Evan, uh, if, uh, we don't have the um, where he finished, but I think Evan was seventh, so seventh in and, and first out. Um is Roni going to be right behind him? Is Wintergreen going to grind him down? That's a tough, tough pull, David. You you got to get rid of Ar Armenia, I'm assuming. Got got to pull. I think you have to. Well, yes, I think you have to pull Armenia. Yeah, and then um, Andrew, from a build perspective, uh, Josh has kind of just been there, but now he's in. Now he's in North. Um, what, what do you, if you're Germany here, what do you, what do you build? Assuming gun, gunboat season, what are you building here? If this is you as Germany, I mean, even in gunboat, if I just watched France not watch into Liverpool, that's that's very concerning to me, and I think it's got to be Army Munich. If it's truly you know, horse blinders, I see nothing but the dots in front of me, that I mean, it's still Army Munich, and you'll just call and play Holland and then backfill and hope they don't walk into Ruhr in the meantime. Yeah. Um, or, you know, maybe you support Hold Ruhr. All sorts of icky, 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 gross tactics that nobody likes talking about. Um, but I think it's got to be Army Munich. Ooh. I agree. Which and is the, army, the army that didn't move to Liverpool now comes off the board. Yeah, I mean, I, I know that was Riaz making some kind of olive branch thing to France. I, I understand that's what it was. I just he could also remove it from Liverpool. I, I just that's the part I didn't get. Yeah. But uh, I don't know that any of this other stuff is terribly surprising. Andre building the fleet in Marseille is a slightly surprising, as opposed it is to a little. Else. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it's only the third year, so you're not super concerned about board topper. I mean, Russia getting out of control is always a possibility, but never a probability, you know? Um, and I don't see the North being somewhere. Because it, it looks like Riyadh is going to hole up and defend Norway. And just, yeah. you know, it, there feels, it feels Khan. like something is spiteful. Ar but, yeah. Army Khan oh, removal. Shoot. Gosh, I, didn't, I was not expecting Army Khan removal. Yeah, me neither. It just it's a the army is a more defensible or defensive unit when you're playing you know tur when you're trying to turtle. I mean, there's no good unit to remove if you're the Turks. There's no good unit to remove. Yeah, I agree, Peter. From the chat, I agree. It does feel like Oof. England, Russia. There's anger there. There's something, or there was like you built that fleet, and I will never forgive you until it, it goes away or something. That's what it feels like. Yeah. Riaz is capable of that kind of reaction, although it's usually a little bit of a fake reaction. But he, but he can communicate. Andre, wow. Andre, on the full aggressive. Oh wow! Convoy to Yorkshire, convoy were... to Yorkshire. Way to go, Germany! Wait, yeah. what happened to Holland in the background? Yeah. Well, he didn't listen. 
Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and that you hope they don't walk into error with support. Yeah. And then yeah. they do, and then you deal with it. But, ooh, God. But, oh, wait. I don't know. Mm. This might still be okay. Is that a misorder? Gonna... Can I get the magic little – sorry. Wait, little who is, magic who little highlight on Tunis. On Tunis. Oh, no, yeah. yeah. I saw right, Bradley right. in the chat earlier. Come back, dear sir. Bradley, that love. is not grace. That is – Hmm. That it's, is clunkiness, is what that is. Was this that is real? for Bradley. It is quite late. Uh, we might still see McCallis uh, in the chat, but Bradley is probably going to bed half, happy, not knowing we're going to get him on this one. Oh, those those blokes never go to bed. No football tomorrow. Mm. Oh yeah, but yeah. Mark. That's that's curious. Otherwise, it looks like back to IT. Business, yeah. business as what was not really quite usual. Joke order. <gasps> mm, I don't know if I believe that. That's more like oh. it here. Wow. Good on, good on Riaz. Bradley Grace, we are glad you're watching us, but it's four o'clock in the morning, man. Get some sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, hmm, maybe he's watching for a reason. No spoilers. Wait a minute. Right Wait a minute. What happened to Bulgaria? There's no IT. There's there's look, there's a G and there's Bulgaria. There's death. No, there's no IT. Only, only pain. Rony. Rony, what happened to you? Um, there is there is continued wintergreen, is what there is, which um you can understand that from the Italian perspective, I think. Yeah. I want to give a quick shout out to Germany, who I feel like it's been a lot of defense this game. Yorkshire was great in the spring, but this negotiating for Sweden is actually pretty clever. Um, that's, you know, especially with the person that decided that you weren't worthy, uh, putting putting you back in, having taken you out of Denmark, you know, only a couple of years ago. So that's, mm -hmm. that's well done. It is. And he picks up uh, two for his trouble well, after losing... Holland there, Holland. so yep. Nets one. Is Andres flipping? If this was maybe what it is, is that gonna come back to bite him in the end where now GR may be solidifying and they grind down England and they grind down France? I don't know. That's a tall order to grind down France. It really is. I I know the Russians have two fleets, but that is that is easier said than done. Here, let me maybe I'll, I'll rephrase. Uh, not grinding down, but not letting, not keeping above France to, you know, top the board and win the championship more so. Well, I think the real question is, what do the Italians do if the French are facing a strong GR? I mean, the Ita the Italians are allied with the Russians, mm -hmm. so that they they could just decide to go after France as well. I mean, they theoretically tried to do it from Tunis ordering to Lyon it just didn't couldn't quite get all the way there uh could be an, it could be an interesting 1905 um I, you know th this is this is why you build a Rus Russian fleet in the north you have to play in both theaters to be a viable Russian you know board topper you have to play in both theaters and Matthew's done what he needed to do I know it pissed Riaz off but he's done what he needed to do to stay mm -hmm. viable yeah, I mean, I really like his southern position. I definitely think, from what it looks like, Ronnie has it out for him and says Italy will get the dots first. But I think Italy agrees to that, even with Russia being on nine here, because they need another fleet if they even want to think about getting something off France in the west. And that you you can't you can't pull Greece away, you can't pull Aegean away. So yeah, they need yeah, McCall season. You need builds ASAP, which means Turkey dying. Um, yeah, which I and I think you just take you take that bet and you go, you know, Russia might get one. They might stab me when it's halfway done, and I just have to hope that like Turkey hates them so much they never leave Black Sea. <laughs> I think. All right, so we um we're we're nineteen oh four. This is a good point since Turkey is still alive and and three will be split up one way. Uh, Andrew, I'll give you first choice so that way uh, David can't copy you. Who's your pick? Well, you all right, do you know. You probably know because you were the GM, don't you? Yeah, but I can pretend. <laughs> um, all right, David. I mean, really, do I want to play a game against somebody who knows how the dice are going to turn out? Uh, mm -hmm. I do not. I say go Matthew Tatanchi. That's what I say. 
All right, I will pick. So then you can't you you be the uh, you you smile and point to point point upwards to let us know which one is right here. So um um I I'm, will. I'm, just, I'm going to give you a minute. I'm not just picking Tatanji because he's currently ahead. I like his position. I like yeah. his I like his alliance position. There's no reason for Germany not to work with him at this point. I think. And even if he wanted to, Matthew's going to be the one in the driver's seat. There might be a situation where it makes sense for him to make a modus vivendi with the French, depending on the situation, which is a good way to slow the Italians down to make sure that you're the board harbor. So I just like his position, not just the fact that he's currently got nine. Because as I said before, Russia with nine is like anybody else with seven. Yeah, It's, it's, it's precarious because you're playing on both sides of the line. Yeah, we got to say a lot of that when Brandon was dominating with Russia last six months ago or so. Um, my so my pick to that is is if I couldn't pick Russia, it would be I'd pick Bradley. It, it, maybe there is enough where France, in order to win, is going to have to be aggressive north, which puts no pressure on Bradley, and maybe Bradley can win a tactical battle in the Balkans and in Turkey to you know steal to steal the win that way. It's it's certainly a possibility. If he can get the jump on Matthew in the Balkans, that would be a coup. Yeah. I think Andre has a tough, tough run through the middle. And if he's gonna go north, he's gonna he's he's gonna get stalled by Russia in the north. Yeah. Andre's actually got a little bit of a interesting position because the Germans can just go whole whole hog against him and I mean he can lose Holland right now, for example. Yeah. And that's what Matthew's gonna be begging Germany to do for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, pulls Armenia this time. Yeah. Another fleet in the north. I love it. Who, Andre? Oh, no, the Russians. Yeah, the Russians, I, both. Yeah. Both of them. Yeah. Yeah, I support that. I mean, come mm -hmm. on, man. You're you're trying to, if you're the Russians, you got to be strong in both part, both areas. Yeah. Well, he didn't even have to take Holland. He just walked right in. Yeah, that's Andre trying to make a deal, I think. Yeah. Just trying yeah. to play a little bit more, you know. I'm just going to go over here and not be threatening, man. You just do what you need to do, but it doesn't need to be against me. Let's make a deal. Oof. Yeah, totally. interesting. Sweden, I want to stick in the north just so it's uh, – Josh has helped try to get that fleet to the line um, with Finland going down to Bosnia. That looks like – I don't know how you rotate that Finland fleet to be useful, though. That seems like it's going to be – a an issue at some point, or it's just going to take Sweden or something. So um, as soon as I say go to Matthew Tatanchi, Bradley Grace realizes he's got an opportunity to stab mm -hmm. and he does. And we and said, he if he got the jump on, if he got the jump on Matthew, it would really be a coup and he may have done it here. The boot Budapest moving, I think is the, the hardest yes. pill to swallow yes. there. I don't think yep. it has to, I think you just ask for a bounce in Vienna, right. Or something, or cause it doesn't, yep. I don't, like I don't like Budapest. I don't like Budapest Galicia at all. You, you're you're better off bouncing in Vienna, yes. Yeah, which means credit to Italy for the press. Obviously, that's what it always absolutely, means. absolutely. Yeah. Somebody asked for that. I uh, I have to assume, or somebody offered, <laughs> and nobody said no. Um, Bulgaria. Wow, takes Bulgaria. So he back to four. Why, uh, to why doesn't why doesn't Bradley move Vienna to Budapest? You know I'm going to point out a hold and say why does somebody hold right? Because I can't stand holds unless it's absolutely. So why would you not have Vienna go to Budapest to prevent the Galicia guy from going back like this? And then Torelli to Vienna, and then you stop it in one of the two spots. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't not take a center there. If Vienna happens to go to Budapest, then good for you. And if Vienna doesn't go to Budapest, then good for you. And you could still go Taroli to Trieste to backfill. So I'm a, I'm a little confused why you would not order Vienna to Budapest again. Well, all... you want him. You want him. Tactically speaking, I think you actually you want him. You prefer him in Budapest because you can clear that out. They can't force Serbia, so you can always tap Romania next spring and force him out of Budapest in the spring. Of course, you're risking Serbia at that point. Um, but maybe you would build Army Naples in the in the winter and then convoy to Albania. And then you would shuffle out Greece somehow. A lot of so hypothetical here. Is, no, hold on. What but, Pixie, what you're saying is you want him in Budapest. You can kick him out, you know, send him to Galicia, which is <laughs> where he would be. If you didn't let him into Budapest, <laughs> make sure I understand I'm, what you are. I agree. Okay. I agree. I, you're Actually, right. I, yeah, I don't know what I'm saying. You know, I, 
I, I am only jerking your chain because you allowed me to do it. Uh, it's just so it's just so late on the West Coast. He's you know. No, that's not what it is. Yeah. I, I just don't like hold hold orders, yeah. and th there are good reasons to do it, diplomatic reasons to do it, but that's a tactical battle right there. So there ain't there ain't no good reason. And as you were saying earlier, <laughs> the shifting the shifting of Finland to Bosnia. Yeah. Oh. Right. Yeah. I will say. Oh, one last only last thing in the south. I just saw Serbia maybe could have supported Bulgaria to Romania. I know this happened like a month ago at this point, but. Hey y'all, that was there was something there maybe. Anyway, but yeah. The oh, North, you mean support the uh, the Turks? The fleet, the fleet into Romania actually, because that might course. have been something fun. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, because you could have actually taken up. both. Khan could have gone to Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. What happened here? Oh, he thought he was taking Bulgaria. I see. Yeah, but he could have. He could have. Some of his orders got leaked. Yeah, did. somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Or, but yeah, the North is. Uh, what the heck is going on here? Still got that army roaming around the island. Did not get into oh oh supported against England is going so it looks like Riaz is going full Janissary. I think it's the big update. Maybe we've been ignoring him for a little bit because we were sad when he had no friends. But it looks like he's got a best friend now. Just seems kind of nice. But how did that not go? What were the orders? Support English to north. Support Norwegian. Can't kick oh, they didn't make it. You're right. Yep. Sorry. You didn't make North didn't move. That was you know, Josh Hennessy has always shown us that he knows how to how to move some units. Holland to Belgium, Ruhr to Belgium was to cut supports potentially, I think, right? It was to maybe make sure that nobody was going to support anybody anywhere. I know that's not what happened anyway, but it was it's a good good example of how you can use that's not intended to be a self standoff. That's intended to cut as many supports from as many different angles as you can. Yeah, Munich yeah. and Denmark yeah. cutting the other ones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's actually the thing. The third scissor that that Josh has used this game. 1902 was a big, big deal. Yep. Um, and I mean, Andre's doing a similar thing with Burgundy cutting Ruhr. Uh, yeah, yeah. To try to block the Belgium attack, and then Holland getting tapped. So yeah, good stuff. Wow, the North, their tactics—they're so good. We're watching. <laughs> yeah, we are watching people that really know their tactics yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So Andre pulls from Holland. Uh, Italy builds from Vienna and what was Bulgaria? Is that a... Yeah, Bulgaria took the Russian center, so that's yeah. why the Turks are building. And, they, and, you know, and the Italians tried to take a Turkish center there after using them yeah. to fight the Russians, so I don't know how that's going to be anything other than there's the fleet, yes. Yeah. So, you know, Bradley may not have gotten enough of a jump on the Russians here. Mm -hmm. Not when he got, yeah. yeah. I'm sure he's got to deal yeah. with the French now, though. <laughs> it looks like he wants to try to deal with, <laughs> deal with the French. Oh, wait a minute. Actually, Italy's doing fine here. Taking Bulgaria. Getting Another into the East fan. Med. How many people have died in Bulgaria? Yeah, that might yeah, that might not be holdable, but it's it kills the Turkish fleet. It's always great to kill your enemies in the spring. Always great to do that. What are the Germans do? What's Josh doing here? He's going because the Russians turned on him, he's going full anti Russian, I guess. Convoy to down. Does appear to be that way. I mean, I guess let's let's maybe look at it from the flip side. You got Holland back, but there's a fleet in the English Channel. And in North Sea, and there's an army in Burgundy. So you're kind of waiting for Italy to open up France at all, but it's like you can't, you can't take anything anyway, right? You need another unit, you need another build, and Russia just decided that you didn't deserve it. So you know, I didn't like it when Russia stabbed uh, Germany anyway. I, you want to go? You wanted to go clean out the trash first. Trash being Riaz Varani. Go clean out the trash first, and then you've got. Then you got a, a better position. So I don't know. I don't know about that. I'm yeah, hoping because you need them to tap. But even then, you're kind of. I mean, this is this is why we were talking about like the third fleet, the Finland fleet's an awkward spot. How do you get it to the front line? You got to go through Sweden. Got to get the Skag. 
it's just it's hard. I think I want to give I want to give credit to Riaz and Andre for setting up like a solid. It's not a real stalemate line, but it is a very <laughs> like important thing to know about how to put your fleets in the right spots in the north to make it so that you know. In this case, it's you know it's sort of Germany and Russia, but it can be like a Russian solo situation, especially in gunboat, where you just gotta like figure out how to block all the holes, like all your holes, fingers in the dams, until until you can just like not let anything through. So it's, it's I mean it's a good line to hold. Oh, no. I mean, is it a stab or was it like I'd rather screw Russia? What kind of what kind of fool picked to taunt you to top this board? Because <laughs> as soon as I said that, everything went wrong for the boy. You know, everything went wrong for him. This game was Tay how many months ago, but it's still your fault, yeah. It is. Tay, Tay it's turned on him that next move, and then he just stabs his only ally in the north, and this is what happens. And Andre Gribikov's all of a sudden looking like the guy in the catbird seat. Yeah, well, I, I wrote off yeah. Andre, so he's got me. Yeah. <laughs> well, we wrote off Andre because we thought Italy would, would continue the wintergreen. Right, pick we up did. some builds from Turkey, and then there yeah. would be a viable like it's either Italy topping or Russia topping, right? Yeah. And then they both threw sand in each other's eyes <laughs> and forgot that France is just sort of still there. But yeah. they, that's well, France, in Spain right? to Leon, look at that Spain to Leon. You know, Piedmont goes to Tyranian. I'm sorry, to Tyrolia at the same time. Leon goes to to to, to the Tyranian Sea. So. Quite a turnaround. And Bradley, we talked about Bradley. Does he get the jump on Matthew and that gives him the chance? Yes, but I don't know if it happened fast enough. And now Andre's too freaking big or going to be too freaking big. No, no defense of Ionian here. That's, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've played this game, but I don't know if I've ever left it open. And if I did, it was always taken. So that's good tactic. But that, but that's you, Karen. That's you. Yeah. Yeah, Marseille, Marseille not getting walked into. That reads like this reads like a game where Andre has yet to tell a really good lie, it almost feels like. Where everybody's just like, I trust what you say. Cause yeah, Marseille's just sitting there. I mean, there were two units on Marseille, and then they both left and he went to Lyon. It could not have gone any better for Andre Gribic. Yeah. I mean, this is this is huge. He's got he's got room to run now. What do you build here, David? It's France. It almost does not matter. Uh, your situation is so great. Um, I would be tempted. I mean, it depends on what his goal is here, but I assume he's he's going to go, you know, into the Mediterranean here, I'm assuming. In which case, I think I'd build an army Marseille for one of the builds so I could put him in Piedmont. Um, or Tuscany. Yes, that's exactly right. Or just convoy to Tuscany, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I build fleet uh, breast, honestly. I think I, th I think I feel a build. Now, there, there's an argument for every. There's build for. There's an argument for army parish. He needs more armies in the middle. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, almost anything would be fine. I'm 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 a little bit tempted when I play France in a situation like this to make sure that I own the northern waters and no one else does, because I think it's easier to take the middle back than it is to take the seas back. So that's why I would mm -hmm. be tempted to build a fleet and go to the English Channel, but. You can make. I, I really think you can make an argument for almost any combination. I fleet Marseille, army Paris. That'd be mine. I want the fleet in the I south. And three in the north is good enough. Maybe the problem one more with fleet later. Marseille is that you're not sure you can actually put it in action. If Leon gets bounced wherever it's going, then the fleet doesn't go anywhere interesting. Piedmont's not interesting if you're a fleet. So that's why I would, if I'm going south, I actually would think the army was more flexible yeah. as an anti, as an anti Italian unit. But that also may not be his plan. He may be making a deal with Bradley and going to clean up. He could go clean up the trash himself in the north. Two armies. I, I said yeah. I think there was an argument for that because yeah. you need you needed another army in the middle at some yeah. point. Yeah. Oh, and Liverpool goes. How about that? Well, you know, Andre hasn't had anything break his direction. So it, it, I'm glad that something's finally broken in Gribikov's direction. 
All right. Well, then, with Andre having momentum, he walks he has, in the Yep. Yeah. Andre, you look the game is over. Andre's game is over because the Italians have slipped into Munich. There's nothing he can do about that. He didn't even support himself to Western Med. Oh, my goodness. Oh, the hold. I, that, wow. that, that, that smacks to me is he's not serious about going into the Med. Yeah. That's what, that, that's what I think that means. And I said, you, could, you can make an argument for not really doing that here. You can make an argument for spending your efforts in the north instead, yeah. and trying to make a trying to make some kind of deal with Bradley. Yeah, I'm not Sweet. sure Bradley's going to listen, but you could take a shot. Bothnia to Sweden, Sweden to Skagerrak. Can you rotate Bothnia out now, or without losing it? <laughs> no, that'll get that'll hold. That looks like that's a deal that got cut, in my opinion. That's what got Livonia to convoy back. Um, so I'm going to bet Sweden gets handed back over. Um, is this enough, though, is the thing. I'm just trying to think if it's enough. Because cause England, because Riaz, like, Riaz looks like he's he's made his decision, right? Yeah. Um, I think maybe Matt needs to risk something attacking Norwegian here. I'm a little surprised that that all was locked up. It's like you can't hit Norway with three anyway, unless you think Germany is going to flip on you again. But if Germany flips on you again, they're doing yeah, it to help going into England. Yeah, it's helping France, so the game's already over, right? Like the game, if Germany decides that France is going to top this board, you just spent a whole term begging them not to do it, and they just did a whole move set that shows that they're you know not going to do it. So I don't think you can hedge against them doing it. Yeah, you got to trust. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm with so. you. I don't, I don't really understand why Barents in Norway didn't take a shot at Norwegian there. That doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, Matthew loses two. Roni. Roni back to four. Yeah, Ooh. well, I stays at four. I think he's rebuilt one. Oh, he's had one piffed every year for the last three years. So is, Bulgaria, is it still in Bulgaria? Is that is – He had the fleet, to, yeah. The ether. Yeah. yeah. He just had the AG and blown up this time. Uh, Bradley you. gets Bradley gets to uh, as well though. He pick, uh, stole back uh, Vienna and then picked up Munich. So even though Andre, we keep saying has all this momentum, Bradley's Bradley's the one in the lead. But, well, Andre does Andre have a friend though? I I don't. Know. That, that's a good question. I don't know if there's any friends on this board. Like they've all gone back and forth. I think Andre's been pretty friendly with basically everybody. I, for I, will, I think the one betrayal was against England when there was the late sea lion, as, yeah. as Stitch called it, and that. But that has even turned out because everybody, Raz was more mad at everyone else. It seems so. Yeah. Like. Well, I think I think Andre needs to build another army now, don't they? Although you could really, I build fleet breast. Do you? Yeah. You worried I mean, about England? You're you're I, talking I, about because the Italians are coming. I think you just slow them down with your two fleets and try to try to figure out something in the middle. Yeah, I I, I it it follows up on your point from last time about wanting to make sure I control the northern waters. I don't now. In Liverpool, my two northern fleets are in Liverpool and Helgeland. I don't like that. Well, that's true. That's true. Helgeland is very far forward. But I don't think he's worried about Riaz turning. Well, it, and at an end of a game, I'm a <laughs> top board. I'm, a, I'm worried about everything at this point. Well, yeah, and he goes about halfway through the time limit. Yeah. Right, that they probably played for like a month and a half at this point. Keep that in mind. Yeah. So, All right. Here we go. I got McCallus on my side, so I feel better about my, my. Yeah, but Russia didn't pull two fleets. He did. He pulled one fleet in the north plus Sevastopol. Yeah. He saw the other game. <laughs> one <and> one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, and Roni rebuilds fleet. Uh, so, but that's just locked up. Because, like, Roni doesn't throw to Italy. Like, all right, so we're, we made a 1904, and we don't need to make another prediction. But 
Roni doesn't throw to Italy. Matthew's kind of crumbling quickly. Germany's not in great position. Oops, shoot. Ah, oh, what did I do? Get out of here, Paul. There I'm not sure. I'm not oh, sure God. who's who's got the best chance here, but I am really enjoying this game. Yep. These guys know how to play. We haven't seen a lot of boneheaded, d- dumb moves or anything in this game. Oh. We've seen a lot of good play. No, I yeah. wish you would I said everything you would expect from an all-star game. Everything has had a, a reason or a purpose. That's maybe not super obvious, but it's totally like, oh yeah, you know. What I was going to say is, that actually, I feel like Russia's gone from the king to the kingmaker. I think has been ever since your prediction. As I'm looking at this, and it's like Italy's success depends on, I think, what we see happening in Serbia, right, is negotiating that. And also what we see appearing in Livonia and then trying to figure out how to work out those problems. But I... This is why, a fantastic... Here's why Bradley, I'm sorry. Here's why Bradley's position was so precarious. And if you're the Italians, you know this. You're fighting a multiple front war. You know, and who has he got to work with here? Yeah. Besides the Germans and in, in Germany, that's really it. Yeah, the 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 juggernaut, 1908 juggernaut, figuring uh, figuring out a way. Well, I you know jo- Josh is going to make sure that's not going to work yep. because he's 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 relocating to Russian soil. Uh, yeah, yeah I'm not sure yeah. why. He must have gotten talked into it that that was his chance for survival. But it's the top board. Yeah, there's no survival, right? Well, yeah. I mean, did he have really have a chance to come back and win the game? I mean, even in a top board situation, you want to do the best you can. That's I think. Yeah, yeah, or do what makes you happy. Well, that's true. I mean, there's multiple motivations that one can have. Oh. No. But I don't yeah, think it's yeah. I don't think it's an irrational way to play if you know you're mm-hmm. not going to win the game to just do the best you can in terms of center count. I, that's what I usually try to do so that I don't become the kingmaker. So I don't really want to be that. I don't care about being the – if I'm not the king, I don't care who the king is. Off with the king's head. Uh, now Roni getting Roni getting some revenge. He uh, piff, piffs an Italian fleet. Uh, so <laughs> Another year, another piff. Um, yeah. Yeah, but uh, is there any shot Roni actually kind of builds up a center count here, like a serious center count? You can never count out the Turks. You can never count out the Turks ever, unless they're actually dead. I think. Unless the game is unless the game is very short time limited, Mm -hmm. he's got a shot, and it's not right. I mean, Mm -hmm. he's got a he's got a shot. He's always got a shot. And look at Riaz getting a build. Yes, indeed. Army Eddie. Probably. Army London. Fleet. Oh, fleet. Oh. Fleet. Well, he doesn't want to threaten Liverpool, right? Because yeah. France is his best friend. They're best. They're BFFs. Hey, at this point, I mean, at this point, though, even putting a threat on him, what's what's Andre going to do? He can't really pull back. Yeah, I mean, I think this is definitely. You're talking about this being a good board. The fact that we can see futures. I could see a future for Turkey here, obviously. I already said that. But England also has a real future here. Mm-hmm. Like this game being a little over half over now. But if Germany eats the middle out of Russia, if Turkey takes a couple off the bottom. Norwegian, though, that makes me a little. That's good negotiating. And then going back to mid-Atlantic. That's, I think, France seeing. Oh, you know, Riyadh might accidentally accidentally get a build or two more than I was expecting, and that could turn into a problem. Well, it's not so just that. Game. He took Denmark from yeah. England. Yeah. My oh, guess wow. is that was not – yeah, that – Norwegian was certainly not discussed. Or discussed, but not that was the order. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think Norwegian is actually the an, an anti-English move here. Oh. Put, put him next to Edinburgh, put him next to North Sea. All right, a 1909 IT reforming. Uh, hello, hello. That is that, now. That is that is an interesting switch here. It makes sort of sense from Roni's point of view, I think. Except for if you're losing he, Serbia. <laughs> well, because no, he, he was he was hoping to use the Italians as a counterweight against the French power. Mm. Yep. 
That's what I'm trying to say. It's sure. a good move if you think France is going to stay south. It's yeah. an I'd rather have walked into Greece move as well if you realize they're going to leave. But still can potentially. Oh uh, yeah, well there's tactics there. Mm-hmm. Oh my. You could also have this happen to you as well. Oh wow. Which is Roni t- taking his shot. Roni taking his shot and somebody smashing smashing his face to the pavement and um, Wow. I'm I'm more I'm more excited about Yeah, this is this means that Riaz and Andre are still together. I just I just misread that or they or they patched it up one or the other. Yeah. That's I mean it felt like good leverage. Yeah. That's what it felt like. Good diplomacy. Yeah. But Bradley, but Bradley gets two out of it, so we'll see. Yeah, may, maybe the French pull it out and go to the Mid-Atlantic allowed, you know, the Turks to be smushed here a little bit. Yeah. Maybe well, that's what, what, as, Andrew, what's, what's Andre's next build? I mean, is he going to get Munich? I... I'm looking at this. This looks like you have enough armies. I think I build the fleet. Um, and I think I probably send it north. And the reason I do that is this yet another stab of Turkey kind of feels like it being 1909. Next year is going to be 1910, which is double digits. And then people start thinking about the end of the game not being so far off. And you start getting into the more, well, who's on top right now? What do I have to do to make myself on top? Because realistically, right, this is going to come down, I think, between Andre and Bradley at this point. I think with this with this yet another crushing of Turkey, Turkey's never out, but this definitely felt like yet another like kick in the shins, knocking you down. Oh, I agree. Yeah, that, I agree. That that hit, Which hit I think his shot. Maybe, was... maybe that's the point. Maybe the point here was to be like, I'm 11, you're 10, France, and then just start – just start sweet talking the board and being like, wouldn't a draw be nice? We've been playing this game for how many months, how many weeks, how many days, how many hours, how many minutes, how many seconds of your life? You're sick of me. I'm sick of you, but not that much. I understand. Andre what if you just here? No, Andre heard all everything you just said, Andrew. I went. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope so. I yeah, I would hope so too, because I think he's got a better shot here. Yeah. Than, Is uh, that David, is that one too many fleets for Bradley? Would you have done army fleet? Um, that is a good question. Because because uh, uh, Andre did uh, fleet uh, brass like Andrew was. Uh, was I think up. I think actually I think actually the fleets make sense. He's got he's got to see. I think that makes some sense. He's yeah. already got armies in Piedmont, Tyrolia, Munich. He needs to go and kill the Turks. That involves t- fleet power and keep the French under control. So I can see an argument for building the two fleets, actually. All right. I agree. I think it's entirely about the spring and guaranteeing Turanian. Yep. While also getting into <sighs> Eastern. Yeah. You got it. Convoy, convoy to Romania. Okay. I mean, Ro- Roni's doing some moves. With Russia again. So attack Russia, join Russia, attack Russia, join Russia. Yeah, the issue is that Turkey can just tap Ionia in here and Tunis is gone. That's kind of like, that's the problem with yep. all this is you still don't have a real line and they can keep hitting. So I guess what you're you're trying to trade Tunis for Bulgaria is what you're doing this year. And then killing Turkey while France throws everything at you Oof. and also just gets free dots in the north, presumably. <laughs> yeah. How long does Andre let Riaz grow? Barrett's is interesting. It's out of his hands at this point, though, isn't it? I mean, Riaz is his own man. He is, but you could have gone to English Channel here. Yeah. I mean, you've put your fleet, your Norwegian, into the Barrett's. You have taken away your power. I don't know. I'm not saying Riaz is not somebody that you can work with. I mean, he is, he is a good alliance partner. But I just just wonder if that could come up come, come to bite Andre later in the game. Yeah. And maybe he walks through maybe Den, Denmark to Sweden. I mean, 
maybe. Or convoys over Denmark to Livonia at this point. True, true. Or Denmark. To I mean, yeah. Sweden. He's been he's been nothing but loyal. Yep. So. Yeah, there's. Me, I would be really me. interested in seeing in hearing Riaz's perspective about through the years about what his his goals were. If he picked a point where he was like. I'd rather see Andre win. I think he deserved it. Or if he's like, we've got five years, like maybe there's a stab in here. Yeah. Maybe there's not even a stab. Maybe he just gets big enough and Italy and France get intertwined and it just makes sense. Yeah. So Russia cutting, it's not the attack on Germany necessarily, but it's the support here. Is Russia now throwing in saying, Andre is my guy? Um. Probably. And, and, and yeah. Josh, why would you not support yourself to Warsaw here? Who cares if Munich is held? I guess that's just trying to keep the French from getting bigger, I guess. I guess, yeah, maybe if there's something where you, you're still mad at Russia, but Russia wants to help kill you and also maybe France. There must There's somewhere the Congo line of diplomatic relations must make yeah. sense somehow. But yeah, this is this has got to be it, right? It's Pass unless, unless Andre thinks he can do better. Yeah, well, it, top of the board and and solo, and that's it. So, oh, good, good yeah. for him. That was that was well played. Obviously, Fran France is a strong country. To let them come back like that, they're gonna they're gonna be hard to beat. Yeah. Um, Brad, um, Brad, Brad, Bradley had some opportunities. He just never could get either corner established. You know, he's just two front war for too long yeah. to be in contention. I know he's still got nine yeah. centers. I'm not saying he is in terrible position or anything, but he's not in great position. Yeah, yeah. I just I, I think the, I think actually the stab on Russia right was good back in was that 06 or something like that. You're talking about uh, the, the Bradley Grace stab, yeah. Bradley, yeah, Bradley stabbing Matt for for Vienna. Um, but if you just the better like following through, you know, you got to complete the swing right, and then watch where it goes. Yeah, I feel like he took his eyes off the ball there. And then that cool. is, never could get back in the West because France was too settled and Turkey was always there. And yeah, it's well done, Andre. Well done, Andre. Oh, oh five in here. So I know uh, Ed has played against um, Andre in many, 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 many games. I, look, I thought the story of that game was uh, Riaz and Andre working it out. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Because that was the key. Riaz didn't take advantage of the situation, and I mean they had a good partnership there. Yeah, keeping keeping Riaz on side, especially, was more important because I think if he just takes Riaz out with those three Russian fleets in the north, then they don't really have a reason not to come attack, push through there, and the line, you know, Scandinavia doesn't get taken, and without it's like three more dots, then it's it's definitely Bradley looking like a good spot. Yeah, and I, I, Andre might have been able to pull it off even if he hit Riaz. Honestly, he, he had such a strong position, but it certainly made it easier that he had Riaz on side. Andrew enjoyed uh, commenting with you. Come back. <laughs> or play, yeah, or play VDL. Yeah, we, no we can comment. Yeah, play VDL. We can comment on your games. Yeah, I got a lot. Of, I swear, I'm I played a virtual game control. with Andrew. It's a uh, lot of fun. He doesn't do it anymore, but he should. No, that's that's all right. Next, well, maybe here I can. I'll make a trade offer. Ooh. I'll play something that you want me to play in. Sure, that's fine. But then you have to review the emoji game from the Nexus Leagues. Done. We will do a special <laughs> special side broadcast on that one. That's the game where you're the, uh, the negotiations are all with emojis. That's I and I made sure that they all listened to me. I have an entire Discord <laughs> DM. It like some kind of weird Generation Y or Generation Z thing that I don't quite get. Tell me out. Kind of like. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't want to alienate you any further. So I'll stop. Yeah, you, you couldn't possibly. You couldn't possibly alienate me, Andrew Zick. It was great to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Good with that. Thanks to Andrew. I'm trying to get a. I'm trying to get a screen. By the end of the night, we'll get some. We'll get the uh, emojis on to show David to explode his mind. So, hey, all I'm right, Ed. We're getting to the end. Of the, 
Get I'm the on the cutting edge of everything. I don't know yeah. what you're talking about. Hey, deadline here. Make a, make a pitch for deadline news uh, as, as you know. The, uh, it, deadline, that, news, deadline news is, is going to be released in a few days, and it, it features a couple of things. One is a, a fairly long interview with McCarlos Camarides, who just won DixieCon, has some things to say about his DipCon victory and face-to-face in general coming in as a primarily online player, uh, recently trying face-to-face or doing more face-to-face. It's a great interview. He talks a lot about the current meta of the hobby. It's going to be fun to listen to. We've also got Hal Shield being interviewed in the My Favorite Things segment about his career as a video producer. So you're going to hear about his work for the CIA and his work for various musical recording artists and who he liked and who he didn't like. Okay. So coming well, up, let's get him to do something on that channel. Of, what's that? He needs to do some work on my back channel videos. He's got all his CIA <laughs> career and a year and a half behind. I got some gold out there. I, Kevin, I, you need to break. I, yeah, I don't. I don't know what you have done to prevent him from wanting to work for you, but uh, but yes, he would be good. But uh, yeah, that is, that is the deadline we'll be releasing probably on Friday. Mm-hmm. And I think they'll. I think we're, these guys are working on the countdown show coming up here on DBN in a few in, in a few days or weeks. Because it's about time to see what the DBNI race is looking like for DBNI points. We're about. No, it's not. Yes, we no, are. It it is. Not. And as long as you're not up there, then yes, it is. Uh, here, Ed. So here is uh, this was Hal. Man, that would be great if Hal would do something like that for Ed Sullivan's back channel show. Yeah. And so all you have to do, Ed, is go win the Denver tournament, which you're going to in a month or so. That's right. And that will get you back up at the top of the DBNI standings where you belong. That's right. I'm I'm a, I'm a swan. All right. We got to do this last game because that, that went on forever with the, the leagues. Can we can we just end this? All right. Oh, my God. We got to – what another uh, – Fantastic group of players, and we don't have unknown anymore as Turkey. We know yeah, it's we got, Doug. Yeah, we got Doug. Brandon, Brandon from uh, overseas, uh, helping us out here. So that's good. And so look at Russia. We got Cody Green playing in all three rounds. So he is our mystery, our mystery winner. Christian Brown uh, played in two. Tatachi playing in uh, live time here, and uh, Tombstone. Next to John Jameson. And, and uh, yeah, look, Tommy's here is Italy. If you had to pick any country for Italy, uh, for uh, Italy, Tommy would be the guy you want to play. So it couldn't be better. I'm tired of seeing Tommy in Germany. Tommy in Italy. What could happen? All right, spring 1901. David, take it away. Tommy goes to Trieste like everyone other Italy except for one we've seen tonight. So no, so far no tornado activity. But we do have John Jameson going to Budapest, a a a, a uh, opening that we do not see very much in today's Austrian hobby. I'm sorry, in the hobby of of Austrian meta, we used to a lot in the old days actually, which is a comment that Ed knows that he loves to hear me say a lot back in the old days. But no, no, no. Say, that used to be a thing. Used to be a thing. Used to be a thing to go to, to go to Budapest to make a deal and then have a some play on Romania as the Austrians. We have the Armenian fist bump, which never was a thing until recently. Uh, the, the bounce in Armenia. And we have the um, French, you know, I'm going to just slip into three centers when no one's watching and I don't need to be defensive in Burgundy opening. So we'll see what that means. We'll see who gets Belgium in the fall. Kevin, you're yep. not. You're Very not aggressive. A, oh. Austria lost Galicia and Trieste. Now gets cut by Italy, but I guess Italy didn't trust. Oh no, no, no! It's a uh, Italy goes to Serbia. Look at that. Yeah, this is this is fun. He he's getting through. This is the uh, what is it, the key. Hey. Right? Well, this is cool. this is close to a key opening. You don't really usually put the army in. Greece in a key opening, but the key opening does involve the Italians going to Serbia for sure. And uh, Turkey gets the Turkey gets the fleet out, which uh, this is this is heavenly for uh, for uh, Juggernaut. The Picardy to Burgundy move was the uh, the order that 
uh, that I like the most, as well as Mid Atlantic to uh, Spain South Coast. That's again used to see that a long time ago. It was a thing. Uh, I uh, foolishly thought France was maybe going to get three builds. It's Germany that gets three builds. Yep. And mm -hmm. bounces the Russians out of Sweden. Again, DBN's most popular brand and coming to the rescue. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is for a late night game. Well, that's not late night. It starts, you know, for most of these players midday. Um, this is an aggressive, this is an aggressive opening. We like it. All right. Uh, Facebook Western Triple, all right? Yeah. Maybe, actually. Yeah. Two two fleet builds from France certainly makes it look that way, and the German builds are consistent with with that. Yep. The English being the Baron C. You're right. This is triple, man. You're right. Yep. <clears throat> Followed through to perfection, except for Yorkshire. Uh, right. That's doesn't really matter because he couldn't. He didn't have anywhere to convoy it to. Yeah. Because he's he um. The English prioritized helping the Germans in Sweden versus taking a shot at St. Pete. I think you take a shot at St. Pete there with your army and the Germans go to Sweden and Russia can only block one of them. I think is what you do. Because you don't really want to take St. Pete with a fleet. And now it's a bit of a problem because he took it with the fleet. <laughs> you know, what's he going to do? He's going to move in, you know, the fleet back yeah. and then get Norway over. Well, maybe it's not really a Western triple. I know this is a I know this is a, a a bold thing to say, but maybe Matthew thinks he shouldn't actually go through with the Western triple. Well, he still gets. They both get a build out of it, right? All right. What about the East now? Let's yeah. look at the fall in the East, um, because we have a fleet in North Africa already, and that's always fun in 1902. Uh, Italians have taken Trieste. Because the Austrians took Serbia from him. He needs a build. Look at all this stuff, too. There's not really a strong... I guess they're worried about the Germans coming as part of the triple, so that's why the Russians and the Turks are not doing anything more aggressive there. Good stuff. Yeah, they realize didn't... there's a triple and they're trying to defend. Yeah, we didn't We didn't know too much on Italy in the first, so getting, getting back, because the trade, the Serbia being retaken... And Trieste being left open is fun. Yeah, this so far we, the only thing to really say about this game is it's Western Triple. So let's just keep and it's going. A way, it's a wave built from England, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Which you do in a Western Triple because you've already got two units sitting around doing nothing as it is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Here they oh, come. Yeah, here they come. They, this is what you do. You put an army in Finland, put the other army in Norway. I mean, I'm not saying they couldn't pull out of this eventually, but the Germans are now in Bohemia. They're in Silesia. They're in Prussia. This is just classic Western triple play. And is the East responding correctly? They're certainly trying to, but the French have even now been able to support a convoy into Tuscany. So that's, you know, they're making progress as Western triples do when they start that early and play that well. Mm. Fleet Tuscany trying to go to Venice unsuccessfully. Tommy, come on. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh, man. They are just rolling. Now it's a sort of internal implosion, right? You know, yeah, this is – the only question is if it's going to turn or not at this point. It's well, you know, and, and Doug's – people may be wondering, what's Doug doing convoying to Naples? First of all, you've got Tommy trying to go to Venice with a fleet, so maybe they just realize they need to put their own units in there. <laughs> but also, you, you know, Turkey wants to get involved, and the only way to get involved here is to go on there, and, and they frankly need another army for defense on the Italian boot. It could, it's fine for it to be a Turkish army. Yeah, because they're not making an offensive press. They don't need to be throwing fleets out into the Western Med. I mean, Tommy's attacking Austria. Yeah, he may he may have thrown in with this. Once he realized he was kind of screwed, he may have thought, well, my only chance of survival is to go live in the Balkans as a janissary or something. Yeah. Mm. Plus one, I plus one. He, I don't think he's got a chance of survival. <laughs> probably, probably not. Although, again, if maybe if he keeps Fleet Adriatic and the – Western powers want to keep him alive. I mean, it's a possibility. I'd be thinking about taking out France. 
is, so is who? F and G. You, you mean if, if you're the Germans? E and G. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this would be the time to do it because the French are not building. So you would do yeah. it right now. Yeah. They're not going to, though, if England, with England building an army in Edinburgh. Now they're showing a lot of love. Yeah. This is just sort of textbook triple behavior. To be honest, I'm not sure we have a lot to talk about here. We do have a G into Greece. I thought maybe that was to kill the fleet or something and build it back as an army, but I don't think that's what that is. That just was a retreat to Albania. I was just saying, I think I've only seen a triple work once in the last year, right? Uh, it's rare when it does work, but that's because it's so hard to make it work. But look, you it, if if there's trust, it it can... It's pretty effective, as we're saying. You know, we've we've seen more effective uh, air tri AIR triples in the last twelve months than we have Western triples. But you're mm -hmm. right; if you can keep it all together, you know the the key here is Germany got both the Low Countries. You got to do that in Western triple, or it ain't no real Western triple. You got to have both Low Countries to Germany, and Germany has to be the biggest power, or, or it does not work. That it's too in, unstable otherwise. Yeah, the the demand here, if I'm Christian, is North has to be in Norwegian soon, and it's not. That's the one worry. And he pulls yeah. Western Med back to Spain, maybe as a it you know is. doesn't do anything different than Western Med, but it's at least at least something to start. What's Austria? Austria is moving down. They're not. They're not. They're not trying to defend. They're sort of being another Tommy and not trying to defend. And it may be that they, um, you know, if you're Turkey and you're faced with with the Western Triple, you either try to like do what Saren was doing earlier and try to get the little guys out in front of you and try to help them defend, or you just try to eat them and hope that their Western Triple falls apart and you could be a big Turkey. I mean, normally, the, I think the proper play is hang back, don't be a pest, take advantage if it, when it breaks. I mean, I don't think that Doug's really done that. No, he's gone the other way. You can sometimes yeah. just say, well, I'm just going to eat my part of these people, and I'm going to try to make sure that EF and G squabble over what they're taking, and, and then I'm right. going to it as the Turks. And that's why you induce Russia coming back, Austria coming back. I mean, you know. It's, so. not, it's, it's a choice you can make. That's all I was saying. It's a choice. You either have to do one or the other. Because odds are it does fall apart. You know, the EFG usually falls apart at some point. So if you're big enough as the Turks, you can sometimes take advantage of that. Goodbye, Tommy. You made it longer than I thought. Uh, so props. He does, he, the Turks do have Austrians moving back north again. So that's a good sign for... Anybody who's not an EFG member. Yeah. Um, Barrett's moving back uh, probably because there's no other use for them to be up there. The Germans fleet, German fleet's moving back too. Yeah. At some point you actually have to do that and it's still good for alliance stability. It's actually, yeah. it's actually unstable if you don't move some units back because then it's too much opportunity for people. I don't disagree, but then Spain should have gone to Mid-Atlantic. I don't think they were talking to France about what they were doing. I, I don't know that. Yeah, I don't know that Christian was part of that conversation, though. Yeah, Norway is Norway to Sweden makes up for maybe. Oof. Well, at some point, if you're thinking about in-game scenarios, Germany can't stay this far ahead forever. Yeah. You do have to stabilize the units at some point. It's just in the early stages, you have to be bigger than everybody else. Yeah. Because otherwise, you're too much of a target. You took Vienna. <clears throat> Turkey's yeah, this, growing. Honestly, unless we're going to see a move here, this you, we could just sort of speed through these turns because it's yeah. tactics. Nothing. We're just we're not seeing we're not seeing any moves that make it make it look like there's any kind of stab in the West. Hmm. Good turn for France, Trieste, and Naples. Indeed. <laughs> no more Trieste. Yeah, but all of this is a matter of time, of course. Yeah. I mean, it's sticking together. The impressive thing is it's sticking together. Agreed. So, Agreed. That, that Christian Brown stuck together through any with anyone for 12 turns in a row. 
I don't know. They're the Christian uh, whispers, Matthew and uh, Brandon. So All right, now Christian does have two two builds here, and builds can't really do him much good anytime soon. So we'll see what that what what he does. Ooh, maybe, maybe, maybe. It also could just be units to do bouncing with. So, like I said, sometimes that's actually what you need to keep an alliance alive is enough units to bounce with each other. Yeah. Yeah, and, and to Christian's uh, defense, I know we're just giving him a hard time for it. He he sees he sees the dots in front of him. He knows when. I mean, the Delta throws people off. It you know he you, he knows where he wants to go, and he, he sees the dots in front of him. Yeah. I agree. That's all he sees. Well, you know, <laughs> Christian's had some good results though, and that's because this you know th this archetype that we've had in the hobby for years of someone who's a little bit of a chaos agent. There are people who make that work. Jason Massbaum. In, in, particular, in particular games. It doesn't work consistently all the time, obviously. But you can make it work in certain games for you. Yeah. Massbaum, I think, I mean, he and I started about the same time in the hobby. And he was a, a chaos agent for a while. I mean, I'm self-admittedly one. But he turned it in, He turned it into a diplomat of the year. So well, Unless I'm not reading it correctly, Adriatic gave unnecessary support to Ionian when it should have been supporting Trieste. Ooh, you're right about that. Uh, it didn't make it though. It, it it's fine. Did not all right. Still, still because those Tyrolia was supporting Trieste. Yep. Ah, okay. Yep. Wow. Well, the English are in Romania. Ooh. Ooh. All right, guys. Here we go. Ten nine nine. How are, oh. we, how are we taking this? I would, oh, we got to get to an 11, 11, 11, 1 because we have not had one of those on the Western side. That would be that may be, that may be what we're doing. Yep. Well, it's not going to be John. Nope. No. No, Turkey gets it. Maybe 10, 10, 10, 4. We'll see. They're doing a pretty good job of maintaining stability in the West. Got enough mm -hmm. units there where nobody's got an advantage. Nope. Still going. <clears throat> it was a lot of holding and supporting there from the Germans, though. Yeah. Oh wait! Oh, oh, here, hold on. Uh, we got to get back on tree. Yeah, support onto Trieste. Yeah, I don't know because you still don't have. You still didn't have anybody trying to go to Berlin. Uh, maybe this was just to, here. They'll end it. No, yeah, they won't. No, they're going to keep going. Yeah. England gets down there. There must have been some kind of goofiness there. That didn't. That looked like it was goofy. That they, they must have worked it out. Somehow. Yeah. English leaving Romania doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Now they're just trying to get to the time limit <laughs> to make it end that way, as opposed to a draw. Still ten, ten, ten. By the way, so Turkey refused to draw. That's awesome. Maybe. Come kill me. Well, they they were down there. Syria's down there. Now it's dead. Norwegian to North Atlantic, Spain, Western Mediterranean. Like there's they're they're figuring this they're, out. They're making sure that they don't have opportunities against each other. <laughs> I just want to know. I just I'm hoping they did this because of BBN. I guess they're just trying to make sure they all stay on ten. Is that the theory? Yeah. Okay. Don't move. I liked analyzing this game because it seemed like everything was just a jump ball. We didn't switch. Hey. <laughs> we just started talking. Awesome. You know, you don't want you don't want every game to look like this. Obviously, they're not. It wouldn't be that much fun of a game if you just did this every game. But every now and then, it can be refreshing to see somebody who says, "Let's just stick together the whole game and and get a good result." I mean, it's not the kind of game I would like to play all the time, but occasionally. Yeah, we saw David. How many? I mean, we saw 11, 11, 11, 1. Ed was in every 11, 11, 11, 1 for two years. And yeah, we complained about it a little bit, but this is the first time it's been done from the West that I can that I can remember. Yeah, it's it, it we have not had very many good successful Western triples in the last couple of years. So it is yeah. it's fun to see everything get 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 tried. Yeah. So well done, Matthew, uh, Christian, and uh, DBN's favorite, uh, Brandon. Brandon Dix. Have truer words, 
have not been spoken on DBN. So, Ed, what'd you think? Is it easy as it looks? It's actually kind of stressful. Was that the last game? That's it. Yep. Oh my god, I can't wait to get out of here. But uh, that was fantastic. I didn't actually do any hosting. Kevin, you did the whole thing. I think you had more airtime than I did, and you did the buttons. But I appreciate getting the credit because that's this is a little, uh, you know, microcosm of my diplomacy game. I get the credit, and other people did the work. I appreciate it. I appreciate you founding DBM is what I appreciate. Thank you. Thank you for being the founder of this great diplomacy broadcast network. And thank you viewers for making DBN what it is today. Cheers to that. Here's a, uh, here's our standings after uh, the end of the, the end of the night, Ed. So your, your, uh, your prediction about uh, Cody just hanging around, hanging around. Look, my man, Cody, he got eliminated, but he got a top. Yep. And uh, there you go. That was good. See, uh, I didn't know these results, so I was really happy. I'm happy to see that Cody uh, went up. Yep. I think, let's see, that's one through ten. Some other names we've seen tonight. So there's a lot of good scores in the hundreds already. I, th I think this is month four, March, April, May, June. So uh, next month will be the halfway point for the season when, when things start getting a little more pressure cooker. So, all right. Let's see if I remember how to do any of this stuff. Uh, that's not what we want to do. Nope. What layout do we like? What's Brian like? Brian like this one? Now yeah, let's do this one. So. If he was here, it would matter. He's not here. It does not matter. Yeah. You tell us what you want. Well, oh, all right. So in, in Brian fashion, uh, David, what's uh, what do we learn tonight? What do we see tonight? What was fun tonight? We saw a lot of different types of play. We saw not just different alliance structures, but people who played it slow, played it fast, played it strong, played it loose. We saw lots of different ways to play this game, and that's one of the reasons that all three of us keep coming back to this thing because it is not the same thing every time. It is different every time or can be different every time. Part of the fun. Yeah. The openings, the op the openings were it for me. You saw some different things. You saw some different styles. Again, Western triple was always fun to do if you were on the winning side of it. Uh, and, and to see one of those tonight, it's a little different. And yeah, we're in the summer doldrums. I, we only had four VDL games tonight, which is the, the lowest of the season. Um, you know, this is the time of year where everyone kind of gets outside, well, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, gets outside and, um, you know, gets a little relaxed. But I know by the time when we get back, uh, back in, in, in later in the summer, these people will look at these games. Ooh, Christian Brown was able to, you know, stick with a single alliance the whole way. Or, ooh, Cody Green had a, a big result here. Now I got to be a little more worrisome around him. So, you know, these, these types of games will leave an impact for sure. There's no question about it. And that really was an impressive sort of breakout game for Cody Green. I was glad to see it. Yep. Ed, parting thoughts? You're the you're the host. I think what I learned here is I can uh, go without uh, cigars for about four hours. Uh, and so that's fantastic. Uh, that's, a, that's a modern era record for me. And uh, I learned this is uh, not just a job for people who have good hair. They have to be quite talented uh, to boot. Uh, and this was quite difficult even for my semi-hosting role. Uh, so thanks very much for uh, letting me do this. We had a lot of fun. So uh, July 8th uh, is our, your next chance. Uh, I'm going to put some outro videos on here. You'll get uh, David Hood's next uh, DVN deadline. We'll, we'll send that out in notifications. Oh, I didn't do a like and subscribe. So no one stays this late to watch the end of the recordings anyway because they would leave before the games. But... Like and subscribe. We're still over a thousand subscribers. We haven't lost anyone since the uh, crossing the magic number. So uh, stick with us, and we'll have a lot more uh, good stuff to come. So uh, we'll see you next time. Good night. All right. Thank you.